What's up? And welcome back to another live stream. Uh, benchmarking with Gizmo Slip Tech. Uh, fixing my camera real quick. I don't know why it's doing that. All right, there we go. And okay, yeah, it was focusing in a weird spot. Uh, so welcome back to another live on uh, live not live unboxing live benchmarking. We've got over twenty five benchmarks for you today. Uh, there's going to be, we're going to start with some synthetic ones and then move right into a huge series of game benchmarks. I've installed all of the games already at this point. There should be like, basically, hopefully we're going to move through this smoothly and quickly. There will be timestamps, there will be timestamps down below though, uh, soon after the live stream is done. So hopefully within like a day after the live stream is done, then it'll, it'll make it easy for you to jump around and look at the different game results that you're most interested in. Um, or you can sit around and hang out and we're going to talk about the SCAR 18, how the SCAR 18 matches up against other laptops in the market, and why you might want to buy it or not buy it. So that'll be basically the topic of discussion. Uh, so chat, feel free to ask tons of questions and discuss the crap out of the SCAR 18. This is an amazing laptop. I think a lot of people are going to really love their SCAR 18. And uh, yeah, I think it's one of the top, probably the top three laptops in the big laptop category. Most likely one or two. I don't know. It's like really there's 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 a lot of really great big laptops this year, and this is one of them. So uh, without further ado, let's get freaking started. All right. So we got everything set up already. We're gonna jump into Cinebench R23. We're going to do a single run, and then we're gonna do an individual run. So let's see here. I think it's already installed. There we go. All right, and we are gonna need HW info, which I think is already installed as well. There we go. And everything should be up to date. The BIOS should be up to date. Um, and I was also gonna show you how to undervolt this sucker right at the beginning here. So let's just go ahead and do that real quick because you know how to undervolt this thing is actually really simple. And I believe it's incredibly safe also because MSI has made it extremely limited. Like you can't over undervolt this sucker right now. So to start, um, you wanna undervolt it. You gotta press the power button, turn it off, press the power button, and then you wanna hold F2, uh, maybe tap it as it's booting up. This should put you into the BIOS. So right now, especially is when you want to be pressing it. There we go. We are in the BIOS now. And um, okay. Um, it's just Mike asked, so far, what are your impressions on the new cooling system? Uh, this is an awesome cooling system. I think it provides an incredible amount of performance. I just wish ASUS was a little more... Um, Lucy Goosey or a little, let the advanced users take a little more control. They, I feel like Asus has got a little tight of a grip on things like undervolting and power limits, especially for the CPU. Um, and it's gonna hurt the performance of this machine versus the other high-end machines. Um, this is certainly capable of matching performance to many of the higher-end machines, but Asus is just locking it down. So uh, first thing you wanna do once you get into the BIOS to undervolt, you go to the advanced mode in the bottom right. Then that opens up this new tab called advanced. And then you go down, I believe, is it voltage configuration? Yes, and then you go uh, core voltage offset. You click enabled, and then you wanna do a minus. And right here you see, uh, you can, the most you can do is a minus 30. So we're gonna do a minus 30. And we're just gonna click save and exit, save our changes, boom. The CPU is now undervolted. The machine should restart. Hopefully we have no issues. Um, I don't think we will. The i9 CPU, the 13980HX, so far in other laptop benchmarks of other users that have unlocked CPUs, I've seen big increases by increasing the undervolt to like 125 millivolt undervolts, or maybe I've even seen some as high as 225 millivolt undervolt, which is a huge undervolt. I would not expect most processors to be able to go that high in the undervolt, but uh, that does significantly boost Cinebench R23 performance. Um, 
I don't want to give any spoilers away, but I'm going to be trying to do a uh, trying to see if the GT77 that I have coming in the mail that just came in the mail last night. Actually, I was messing with it last night. I'm going to see if I can set a record or at least get as close to the record as I can with the GT77. So um, it's going to be really interesting. I can't wait to see what we can get. Um, so let me well let me, let me get logged in to all of the software here real quick and and then we'll be we'll be on our way and I, like I said I should have everything installed already so we shouldn't have to wait on any games. Um, notice also in the uh, left side over here over that that side that side of the screen there's all the text for all the games we're gonna do. So you can see we've got Cinebench R23, Time Spy, Port Royale, Crystal Discmark, Geekbench 6, Dying Light 2, Dead Space, Warzone 2, Overwatch 2, Cyberpunk 2077, Fortnite, Watch Dogs Legion, Red Dead 2, God of War, CSGO, Hogwarts Legacy, Control, Elden Ring, Apex Legends, Flight Simulator, Witcher 3, Rainbow Six Siege, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Far Cry 5, Control, Valorant, and League of Legends. That's our goal. There'll probably be a few games in there that we're gonna have to skip. That's a, just a warning, just in case there's issues or uh, bugginess or whatever. Um, I'm anticipating we may be skipping some of those games. Um, but uh, I'm going to try to get all of them in today, if I can. So, uh, Al Bessia says, Hello, I love watching your live streams and videos. You're the best YouTuber for gaming laptops. Thanks, man. I appreciate your nice comments. Um, sweet. So, I've got Battle.net installed. I've got uh, Valorant installed. Epic Games. I'm going to exit Vanguard. Because I think that could hurt performance in other applications. Um... And uh, I'm also, I'm not going to worry about exiting some of these other ones for now. Uh, I do. I do exit them. Okay, so we're going to do all of our Steam games first, pretty much. Um, so I'm just going to keep Steam open for now, and then we'll open up the other ones in a moment. So we're going to get our HW info open. And we're going to get Cinebench. We're going to start with that. So we're going to go down the line uh, in the top left of the screen. We're going to go down that line. Um, so, And I'm sure it's going to take us at least two or three hours to get through all these benchmarks. But feel free to hang out. Ask any questions that you might have. Hood Hustler says, XMG Liquid Neo Cooled Laptop versus the biggest MSI is going to be an interesting comparison. Oh, yeah. I think that performance is going to be one of the top most interesting, at least from a GPU perspective, Arguably the best GPU performance. The GT77 is going to run circles around the Neo, though, when it comes to CPU performance. So, okay, so know that right now we have a 30 millivolt undervolt for all of these benchmarks. Just right off the top, we're going to undervolt it because that's how every SCAR18 owner should be running their laptop. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't want to do that. Um, unless you run into issues, I think 90, over 90% of laptops should have absolutely no issue at all. We're running a 30 millivolt undervolt is my anticipation, my guess. Um, I need to elevate the back of the laptop like I always do. All right. So I just put this, this SSD, I just put it under the back to raise it up about a half inch. And I, it's something I do for all the laptops. And it's something I would in general recommend most users to do as well. Um, at least, most of the time. All right, let's reposition this a little bit. All right, that should be good. Okay, HW info. We're gonna do a single run. Is the GPU in ultimate mode? Yeah, it is. GPU is in ultimate mode. Um, is this one of the best gaming laptops on the RTX 4090 for the money? Is it worth the difference between a 4080 and 4090? Um, I don't know if it's the best for the money. There, This is a little bit of a more expensive 4090, because um, you've got like the Aura 17X that's cheaper than this for a 4090. You've got the SCAR 16 is cheaper than this for a 4090. So we got 31,522 for a single run. Let's run it again. And notice our boost clocks. Right now, uh, they're all pushing 4.3, 4.3 gigahertz approximately. Our pull draw, power draw pull is 160 approximately. Our temps are 81, 87, 
Uh, let me zoom in so you can see a little better. 31,200. And we'll run one more single run, then we'll get a 10 minute run started and I'll start answering questions. So feel free to start asking questions in the chat, everyone. Chopa chow. So these scores are excellent. Previous generation, like Intel 12th gen was getting like around 20,000 was the upper end. Um, so going up to over 31,000 is a like 55, 60% bump in performance compared to previous gen. It is because of the increased efficiency cores uh, really boosting performance. So let's go into a 10 minutes throttle test. Uh, before we start that, I wanna give it a second to cool down a moment. This laptop really doesn't need that because we're already down to 55 degrees on the CPU, 43 on the cores. So, I mean, it's pretty much good to go. So we're just gonna go ahead and get it started in about three seconds, three, two, one. All right, so let's see what we get for a 10 minute run with the Undervolt. Uh, let's take a look at chat. Um, okay, so. Chris says, give our guy a thumbs up, please. Yeah, it does help if you can give this live stream a thumbs up because uh, basically the YouTube algorithm says, oh, people like this live stream. So let's share it to more people. So it helps me as a content creator. Thank you guys for hitting that thumbs up button. Um, JC asked, did your Blade 16 fan spit up in quiet or balanced auto mode? So when I was in balanced auto mode, the, the fans were extremely quiet, at least in the loads that we were testing. Um, like it felt like a silent mode from another laptop. Um, but I need to do more testing to verify. Maybe an extended load would cause the fans to ramp up. But the power limits in balance mode were very, very low. So the Blade 16 just uh, was very quiet in balance mode. It was almost like a silent mode. Um, even light br web browsing would cause the fans to spin up in those modes for you, JC? That's interesting. That's not what I experienced. Maybe a BIOS update is so it's different between us or Synapse update or something. I don't know. Um, okay, Carlos asks, when do you think the release price for the G14 2023 Ryzen 7000 series? I don't know when it's coming out. Um, I'm expecting hopefully before the end of this month, we should have G14 pricing. Ovidio says, the only complaints I have for this laptop is the 500 nits screen, others have a 1000 nits screen, and the 4800 megahertz DDR5 RAM, other laptops have, yeah, 5600 on like the, the Razer, and a lot of them have 5600, but um, I'm not sure exactly how much that's gonna impact performance, all right? That's the thing, like memory speeds are a small percentage impact, but they, they can make an impact, especially in certain games that are memory sensitive. But most games are not memory sensitive and most applications are also not memory sensitive, but certain ones like Photoshop can be memory sensitive. So depending on your workload and what you're doing, memory speed can matter a lot more or a lot less. Um, okay. Uh, I've also noticed coil wine with mine unfortunately went idle, which does get a bit annoying. So today, uh, so in the last live stream, I did a coil wine test near the end uh, in turbo mode and I did not notice almost any coil wine, basically completely silent. Today I was doing some gaming on the SCAR 18 in Dying Light 2, and I was running it in silent mode. So no fans were audible at all. And uh, I did notice a little bit of kind of a clicking kind of coil wine. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but it was very minor. And it was only because it was in silent mode. As soon as I went to performance or turbo mode, I could not hear it at all. Um, and uh, so, this SCAR-18 might have a little bit of, of uh, coil noise, but not much, or there's something that's making a little bit of like kind of a clicking kind of-ish sound, but it's super minor, only in the silent mode. So basically, if you're gonna use, uh, if you're gonna use speakers or headphones or have the fans running, you won't hear it at all. And that's only when it's under load on, in silent mode. That was kind of what I was hearing, it's very minor. Okay. <clears throat> Any word on the anything where M18 with the 4090? No word yet, don't know when it's gonna happen. Um, I'm expecting hopefully before the end of March. Um, I, would, I would hope that by then it would be, it'd be out. Okay. Uh, and JC said he meant coil wine on the Blade 16. Oh, that's interesting. I don't think I heard any coil wine on my Blade 16. 
Um, so coil wine is something that's going to be very um, laptop model specific uh, and then also unit to unit specific. So, you know, certain types of designs are going to be more susceptible to coil wine than others. And uh, so, oh, I should also reset the stats here so we can get averages, at least for the second half of this. Um, okay. Gadget Man says, running the uh, strict SCAR G18 version with 4090. So you just, it's just SCAR18. There's no G in front of it. I know some other YouTubers that don't know what they're doing said the wrong name. That's okay. Just know it's a SCAR18, not SCAR G18. Um, okay, con continuing on to your question. I just want to make sure that everyone knows that. Uh, on eco mode, I'm getting two and a half to three and a half hours of battery. You're experiencing the same. If so, do you, mind, do you find it acceptable for such an expensive laptop? Uh, that's a great question. Um, so battery life, to get the maximum battery life on these guys, you really need to optimize what you're doing with them. Um, that means running the right web browser, which is probably Microsoft Edge. It means turning down the brightness. It means probably turning off or turning down the keyboard backlight, um, reducing the screen refresh rate, and then being mindful of what on your computer what things are actually loading up the CPU and GPU because that can really down your actual battery life in real in real life. Like if you have like Windows update going on in the background, like you're going to get like an hour and a half, two hours of battery life. It's going to kill your battery life. So you really got to make sure nothing's going on in the background. No back, like Steam is not downloading. Like I was running the GT77 last night, uh, actually the night before last and uh, I was set, testing the battery life. I had I was in integrated graphics only mode with it, and that sucker was only an hour and a half long in the battery life. I'm like, what the heck is this? And then I remembered, oh yeah, I'm downloading Steam games at 60 megabytes a second. That's causing the fans to ramp up to keep the SSD cool and also engaging the processor as it's downloading everything. And of course, the, the Wi-Fi is using um, power and, and the screen brightness was up bright. And then I was like, oh, okay, let me change everything down and pause Steam and then you know, the battery life estimate shot way up to like four plus hours or whatever. So you really got to be mindful of what's going on in the background. Um, is coil wine bad? It depends on how noise sensitive you are. Honestly, like some people just aren't going to care about coil wine because they're always going to game with headphones. They're always going to be in a noisy environment. Other people are going to be driven crazy by it because they're noise sensitive and they have very quiet environments that they're working with. Like uh, maybe you're in a quiet office environment with other people. You don't want to have coil wine when you're like next to like 10 other people in like a conference room or something and your laptop's just going, dee, 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 you know, got little, it's, you know, little uh, sounds going on, you know? So um, it's just really going to vary from person to person. Will this run Blender and high storage games smoothly? Great question. Uh, this is going to run Blender, uh, Blender really, really well. And uh, yeah, it's going to run story, high storage games quickly. We're going to, do Crystal Disk Mark as one of the benchmarks here coming up very soon in the next few minutes, and you're going to be able to see the storage speeds are very fast on this laptop. Um, Gadget Man says, thanks for the tip. I'll give it a shot. No problem, sir. Um, JC says, I come from a MacBook, so I think that it's changed my noise sensitivity. Yeah, uh, MacBooks are very quiet. Um, and less certain MacBooks are also very loud when you turn it on max fans. It depends on the MacBook you have, but... I used to have a MacBook that was extremely loud. Um, is this an OLED screen? No, this is a QHD 240 hertz display. Um, so we've got two minutes left on Cinebench here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull HW Info up. We're gonna look at our stats. So for the last few minutes, we have been averaging right at four gigahertz. Our E cores are at 3.3 gigahertz. Our P cores are at four gigahertz pretty much. Our average Core temp is 79 degrees, just like the Strix G18. Package temp at 85. These temps are all excellent. Our package power averages have been 140 as expected. It's supposed to boost to like 175 for the first like minute or two, and then it's gonna go down and throttle at 140. Power limit, and this is a great power limit for great temperatures long-term on this machine. All right, so we got max fans running right now. These are the opt this is the optimal long-term performance that you can expect from this machine. And it is excellent performance. This is gonna be a great performer for basically any kind of CPU heavy loads. Um, and if you just run everything at stock with a, a 30 millivolt undervolt, you, just, you can be confident that the temps are gonna be great. 
You don't have to worry about checking anything. It's going to be easy, great for casual people. Um, it's just not going to be great for someone who's like a maxer. You know, they want to get the maximum, maximum, maximum. And, you know, they could get 5 10% faster speeds by boosting the clock speeds and optimizing, you know, maybe they're using a laptop cooler and they're blowing tons of air in there. They're cranking down the AC and they want to get the most performance and set benchmark records. This laptop's not for that, but this laptop's still plenty fast uh, and a great day-to-day -day performer. So in terms of CPU performance. Uh, JC says, thanks for all you do. Appreciate all the info. No problem, man. You got it. KK says, does Asus have a setting in the BIOS to limit battery life to 60%? I want to avoid uh, bloated batteries in the future. I believe it's in the armory crate where you set that. So we'll see. Um, JC says, I wonder what the difference is between a 4080-175 watt and a 4090-145 watt. Um, I think it's going to be pretty significant from what I've seen. I think it's going to be at least 15 to 20% going down oh you said 4080s 175 versus 4090 145 that's probably going to be very close that's probably going to be very close maybe the 4080 even might be faster i don't know um okay so we're about to see the results let's see what we get on our 10 minute score 29,890 for our 10 minute cinebench run fantastic basically 30,000 29.9 29.89. Um, so if you can just undervolt this a little more, raise the power limit higher, easily push probably 31, 32, maybe 34, even if, if Asus let us, but they don't. So, um, okay, next up, let's see here. What do we got? 29. I'm going to put that in for our scores here. So I'm going to try to update this as soon as we have uh, a score. I'm going to put it in the, in the top up here. Okay. Uh, I'll just leave it in there. All right, and then now we're doing Time Spy. All right, so we're just gonna follow this down in order. I know that we've already done these, but I just wanna make sure that uh, all of this is in one video and every, everyone can easily find all the information and uh, and we'll just try to move through them quickly. All right. Gadget Man says, between a SCAR 18 and Razer 1618, do you think build quality on the Razer is enough of a reason to choose the Razer over the SCAR 18? Uh, not really, necessarily. It's more, it's not just the build quality though, it's more about the size. The, the Razer is definitely gonna be smaller and just, you just feel, you just feel like it's more expensive in your hand, I guess, I don't know. Um, but I'm really curious about the actual temperatures of the chassis, that's what I'm most curious about on the Blade 18, um, to see if it gets too hot to really play. Long sessions on the wrist rest. Because that's definitely a deal breaker for me if the Blade 18 gets really hot. I don't think it will because of the third fan, but we'll see. Hyphen says, would you take a 16 by 9, 17.3 inch, or a 17 inch, 16 by 9 screen? So you mean 16 by 10, 17 inch. I would rather go with a 16 by 10, 17 inch if I have the option, but for me, the actual quality of the display is more important. So, for example, if, uh, if a 16 by 9 aspect ratio display actually outperforms the uh, the competition, like on the GT77, I would definitely consider that display as a better display than a lower quality 16 by 10 aspect ratio display. So that's lower brightness, lower color gamut, stuff like that. So I would take the GT77 screen over the SCAR18 screen. Not that the SCAR18 screen's bad, it's great, but um, I mean, a thousand nits 4K, 144 hertz, that's pretty insane. It's so bright. I was, that's, that, was, that was what blew me away about the GT77 that I had hands-on uh, with the last uh, two nights because when it came in the mail, I was just getting everything installed and I was like, I had it plugged in and I was like browsing the web to like, I don't know, download Cinebench or something. And it was just like so bright. I had to turn the brightness of the display down. It was so bright. I mean, 
this can kind of get that way too a little bit on the white screens, but it's not the same like, like it like hurt my eyes, physically painful in the eyes. It was so bright, <laughs> which is a pretty, in, in, uh, a different experience. You don't usually get that unless it's an OLED display, but because it's, you know, mini LED, it gets that bright. Uh, is the Razer keyboard good for gaming? Sure. Yeah, it's a good one for gaming. Uh, you don't have to re-ask your question. Please don't re-ask questions. Uh, what kind of laptop would you prefer? Any specific brand or specs? Uh, the most important thing for me is uh, getting maximum performance. Oh, I see we're not getting Afterburner. Let me have to restart this. Our overlay didn't go in, so I have to restart this. Sorry about that, guys. Our, our uh, overlay did not attach or whatever to the to the system. Hopefully it does this time. Okay. What kind of laptop do I prefer? Any specific brand or specs? So I have owned Alienware, Clevo slash Sager, uh, Asus, MSI, Dell. I've owned several of every brand. I'm not necessarily partial to any one brand because even within each brand structure, there are like more premium laptops that I would consider as much better and other laptops that I'd be like, yeah, I would never buy that. Um, so like the cheaper budget mid-range ones, I usually would, wouldn't buy myself. Not that they're bad, but um, I'm just, I just always gravitate to wanting the best, I guess. That's just kind of who I am, but... Um, I don't know. Anyway, Manny Gaming says, uh, but why having a 4K screen on a laptop? To me, the 240 hertz 2K seems much more thought through on a laptop. I agree. A 240 hertz QHD is the optimal resolution. And uh, that said, if the QHD 240 hertz screens are only 500 nits brightness and the 4K 144 hertz screen is 1,000 nits brightness, I probably would take the 1,000 nits 4K display as the better overall rated display. You know, because you, like, for example, with a 4K screen, you could always just use DLSS on performance mode to boost the frame rate in most games now um, to get similar-ish performance. Or you could, in certain really demanding titles, you can even drop it to QHD on the 4K display, and it still looked pretty dang good on the GT77 when I was trying it out. I need to do a little more testing, but... There are options that you can take advantage of if you have to. Um, that said, in general, I do agree with you. The, the most optimal display for a laptop right now is QHD 240 hertz, but like 1100 nits. Like on the SCAR 16, that's probably the best balanced overall display, in my opinion. Uh, is it actually 1000 nits in SDR? No, it's 1000 nits in HDR. Interestingly enough, some of the reviewers are saying it's like 925 nits in SDR. I don't know if they were actually correct on that, but uh, there is a lot of HDR content that you can take advantage of with the 1,000 nits display, though. There's uh, a lot of video games. There's like, a t like most of the mainstream titles these days do support HDR, um, and some don't, though. But even, even, if, even if the content is not HDR, the base nits brightness on the GT77, I think is still like 600 something. So it's still a brighter display, even in SDR. So, okay, yeah, so let's take, a, let's take a look, let's analyze. All right, so we're pushing over 170 watts to the GPU. Our clock speeds are not that high. These would easily boost higher. We could score higher in Time Spy if we overclock the GPU. Um, for example, on the GT77, I was getting about 2,400 megahertz on the RTX 4090. So that's a huge difference in boost clocks there. The temperatures were also excellent. Was that like upper 60s, lower 70s for the GPU and CPU? That's phenomenal. That is amazing temperatures. Um, now this should push the CPU to the max and it should heat that CPU up quite a lot. So just keep that in mind. Actually, it's only in the 80s. That's actually pretty good because that's basically a CPU. It's not that long though. But sometimes I noticed on like the Alienware M16, the CPU got really hot in that 
quick CPU test. What is the best keyboard uh, that I've touched in this year's laptops? Probably the GT77 mechanical keyboard. That is my favorite keyboard now. Uh, after seeing it in person, having more time to type on it, it is incredible. Uh, I really like... I really like the Asus and Lenovo uh, keyboards, though. Those ones are also excellent. Okay, so our graphic score is 21,270 for manual fan mode. And I want to go over what I have set here. I already set this uh, earlier before the live stream started, but we've got CPU on 140 watt for our PL1, 175 watt for our PL2. That's the short power limit and the long power limit. And then for our Overclock on the GPU, we just got the default 50 megahertz on the, the base clock overset, uh, offset and 100 megahertz on the memory. You could easily push, boost this further, okay? You could, you could push this all the way, well, probably both of these all the way to max, no problem. And you'll see increases in performance by a few percentage points. We also have the GPU mode in uh, ultimate mode, which basically d disables the integrated GPU in the CPU. So allows for slightly better temperatures. And I want to note that the Strix G18, when we did the live benchmarking, it was not in the GPU ultimate mode. That's the one thing that I kind of uh, wish I had changed, but just I want to make sure that it's clear with the benchmark. So that's what we got. If you, if you switch it to turbo mode, the fans will be a little quieter, but uh, the temperatures will also be a little higher. Okay, so that's an excellent time spy score, both for the CPU and the GPU score. It is possible to get more. Um, like the G GT77 that I tested the other night was 23,000 something. Um, I think out of the box it was 22,000 something, but with a slight overclock it went to over 23,000. So there is, a, there is some gains to be had with a higher power RTX 4090. Uh, but the CPU score is right up there. It's pretty great, 15,960. You could get higher too, again, with raising the power limit and um, a heftier undervolt. Anyway, so now let's hear uh, let me put that into the benchmark stream. Um, I'm going to go here. We're going to back it up just a little bit. Okay, so 21,270 for our Time Spy GPU. Boom. All right, so Port Royale. Let's run that sucker. All right, is this better than the Blade 18? This is gonna be higher performance than the Blade 18. Hard to say exactly how much, I'm guessing five to 10%, um, but it's gonna be right in the same ballpark. It's not gonna to be too much different. All right. Abdulaz says, amazing score. Yeah, it is a pretty phenomenal score for a laptop. Like now that I've t tested a bunch of these, I'm like, this score is good. It's not the very, very best, but, it, but realistically, like this is incredible for, incredible performance for a gaming laptop. Um, okay, so I was talking about the best keyboards. I would say GT77 is my top one. Then probably SCAR18. Then probably something like the Lenovo, probably, Pro 7i, something like that. Those are going to be my top three in terms of like feel and layout because they all have number pads. Um, the Alienware M16 was also really nice. It, it feels good, um, but no number pad on that. I'm thinking the M18 will be a little better. Um, we are doing Apex Legends. It is, uh, don't worry, it, you can see on the left side, over here in the top top corner up there, all of the games we'll be testing. Apex Legends is on that list, so bear with me. So at the top here, 55 degrees Celsius, 57 on the CPU. For some reason, our overlay is messed up right now, but we're pulling about 174, 173 watts, 174, 174.7, 176 watts. Excellent overall temperatures and performance coming out of this SCAR 18. It just like, it's, it's simply phenomenal. It, it's a great balance system, tuned really well. Um, you're waiting for the, uh, the Monster MSI GT77? 
Yes, that is going to be next, probably Monday. Uh, I already have it. I already have it set up and everything. Um, so I don't think I'll do it tomorrow. Probably take a day off tomorrow. Um, but uh, my plan is to do the GT77 as my next live stream laptop. It's, I've got so many things to do, so many different laptops to do. Um, and you know, these, these live streams are so thorough, it's hard, to, <laughs> it's hard to do more than one live stream in a day because my voice goes out if I do more than three or four hours of constant talking. So um, please test the Acer Helios Predator 18 and Alienware M18. I have ordered the Alienware M18. I have not seen the Predator 18 for sale in the United States yet. So once that goes on sale in the United States, I will try to buy one and test it. What laptop do you think is best? Uh, best balances work and play. Hmm. Good question. I would say something like the SCAR 18 is excellent for work and play because you can just turn off the RGB and it looks like a normal business -y laptop. Okay, so we got 13,000. 583 in Port Royal. So let's go ahead and put that benchmark result in. 13,583. All right. And we are moving on to our next test, which is Crystal Disk Mark. So we're just going to do default settings for Crystal Disk Mark and let it run. And let me see if I can pull up the SSD. So you can see our SSD speeds right here going on. The read rate is 10,800 right now in uh, HW info. That's insane. That's so good. Um, especially for, a, these are two, these are gen four SSDs and RAID zero is what we got going on in this laptop. So, uh, know that the read speeds are going to be super fast because of the, the RAID 0. If you go to the QHD resolution on the Titan, will you get higher refresh rate options than 144? Nope, you're locked at 144. Yep. How much more powerful is the desktop 4090 relative to the laptop 4090 in percentage? Uh, it's going to depend a lot on the resolution you're playing at. Um, I know Hardware Unboxed did a detailed breakdown on the laptop versus desktop. Uh, sadly, they they thermal like they uh, they power limit throttled the GT77 CPU and all their benchmarks, which is total crap. Uh, but aside from that, it uh, it was a great test, and it showed, I believe, you have to check the check the their their results, but. I think at 1080p, it was only like 20% faster because of a lot of CPU bound games. But then the higher resolution you went, the gap got bigger. So it depends. And it'll vary a lot from some games. So some games, the laptop actually did just as good as the desktop because it was CPU bound. Um, but if you're planning on gaming at 4K resolution, you're gonna more likely see better and better performance on the, uh, the desktop. Can you hear any coil whine? Uh, Noctis? Lucius, I did a coil wine test in the last live stream. I did not hear any today when I was playing in silent mode. I think I heard just a little bit of it, but it's not severe. Uh, it's not as severe as the Strix G18. Um, but typically speaking, when under a heavy fan load, no coil wine. Yeah, I think Jared did a test too on the 4090 versus uh, laptop versus desktop. I didn't watch that one yet. I'm going to watch it. Is the MSI brand reliable overall? Been eyeing the Titan GT77. Uh, in general, yeah, I think they're a very reliable brand. I think the biggest issue with MSI in the past has been screen hinges. And um, and I think they've gotten a lot better. Their new, their new hinge designs are much improved and I'm hoping that it's no problem now. We'll see, we'll see. Um, I think, I think just in general, I think the, uh, MSI is, uh, is a good brand though. I've, yeah, the only th problem I've had with MSI laptops in the past is just a hinge failure. Uh, one of my laptops, I think it was like a, 
GS63 VR with like a GTX 1060 in it, I think. It had uh, the hinge broke after three years, so of constant use, and uh, that was like this. That was the only that was the only issue I've had with an MSI laptop that I've owned. So, but I've seen a lot of posts from users with failed hinges. That's that was my that would be my biggest hesitation regarding MSI. But like I said, I think their hinge design has improved a lot, especially this year. So. Okay, so we're almost done. Let's go over the results. We got 10.7K uh, for the, the read. This progressively tests different sizes of file sizes, and these are phenomenal scores. Again, we're in RAID 0. We have two SSDs, Gen 4 and RAID 0. It's going to be phenomenal reading right out of the box on the SCAR 18. Um, total of two terabytes of SSD space on this guy. Will you test the G18 on more games? Uh, hopefully soon. I've just got so many different things to test. So uh, today we're going to be testing basically the full suite of games if I can. And uh, that's the plan, hopefully. Okay, so there's our final results. I hope you guys find uh, the Crystal Dismark interesting. I'm going to do just the top end score for on the written thing here. Uh, crystal Disc. We're going to say 10.8. 7K and 8.5K. All right. And uh, now we're going to move to Geekbench. So my goal is to move through these quickly. I don't really view Geekbench as that valuable, but I know some people really like it, so that's why I'm going to run it. We're gonna run the CPU one first. It's so interesting. It's not like this CPU test isn't even pulling high wattage on the CPU. Like what? <laughs> I don't. I don't understand. Maybe it's a single thread performance. Is that why? I need to change the battery in the camera. It'll just be a second. Please let me know if the audio is delayed or if it's good. Is DDR5 on a laptop available with Expo? Both Phoenix and Dragon Rage support it, but I can't find any available. I'm not sure, Salem. What's with this undervolting? Why would you want that? Great question. Uh, so Spazov, basically, fundamentally, process man uh, you know, CPU manufacturers like Intel and AMD what they do is they have to increase the voltage across their whole product stack to make sure that CPUs run effectively. And that means that they overvolt their CPUs so that this, all, all of the CPUs have enough voltage to run well. That means that there is a wiggle room built into every CPU, pretty much, that you can redu reduce the voltage on the CPU by a small percentage and that basically means that the CPU then runs more efficiently. At the same speed, it runs more efficiently. And uh, from a fundamental perspective, it means that your temperatures are gonna be lower, your clock, speeds can, your clock speeds can therefore boost higher, and if you're watt limited, like in the Asus Strix SCAR 18, you're basically going to be able to get a higher clock speed for the same amount of wattage up to that 140 cap. So undervolting is just an efficient, free way to get an increased performance, but not all laptops are gonna be able to do that, okay? So not all laptops will be able to undervolt to the same level because the silicon, when they make it, will have varying levels of performance, okay? So 
Uh, single core score is 2842, multi score score of 16935. Let's go and run the GPU bench, see what it gets. Uh, Diver D says, question, I feel none of these year's laptops are perfect, i.e. next gen Strix G18 will have a uh, 14K RTX 5000, best RAM, 1080p webcam, bright mini LED, etc. Better to wait for tech to line up. Thoughts? Dude, tech is always getting better. And that's just a fact of life. It's always been that way. That's how it goes. All right, so we got 93,586 for our GPU score. All right. There's Geekbench. Uh, oh, okay. Hold on. I forgot to put the scores in. Okay, so let's put those in here. Geekbench. Well, we get uh, 2842 and uh, 16935. And then for our GPU, we got 93,586. Okay. Awesome. Now, we get to start our game benchmarks. This is exciting. Have you guys played Dying Light 2? I was playing it today, and I was blown away. The, the game is freaking so cool. It's such a well-done game. Um, there's a reason why this thing is blowing up in popularity, and it's because it's just... Extremely well done game. Uh, Yefes Saint asks, this or the Aura 17X 4090? Great question. Uh, I think either one could be a great option. I haven't got to test the Aorus though, okay? Um, the Aorus is gonna be thinner, I believe, and a little lighter, about the same weight. I don't know, it's pretty close. And uh, I think, I don't have, I don't, we don't have enough detailed performance numbers on it yet. It's going to be good performance. It's going to be in the same ballpark as the Scar 18, but cheaper. It's, it's a better bang for the buck probably than the Scar 18. Uh, but we need to actually get the full test to get the full story. So that's my story or what I would say about that right now. Okay. So we are running in high quality ray tracing. All right, that's our default preset for this game. Let me zoom out. I just realized you guys can't see the full screen. All right. Bingo. All right. Bada bing, bada bing. And let me also, I'm gonna try to make Geekbench a little, it's kind of huge. I was gonna say, Geekbench 6, GB6. Okay, that's a little better. All right. Uh, so we're doing high quality ray tracing presetting. Uh, hold on, everyone. One second. Yes, sir. I'm on live right now. Did you need something? Gotcha. Yeah, I, I already have plans for tonight. Thanks, though. All right. All right. Okay. That was my dad seeing if I wanted to go to an NFL football game. and I can't go tonight. Um, okay. Dying Light 2. All right. So let's get into it. So we want no V-Sync. We're going to run DLSS. So for all the tests, we're going to do DLSS on quality, 16 by 10 QHD. And uh, I want to point out frame generation... We're gonna run frame generation on any games that we can run it on because I have yet to see any reason to not run it. It's, it's, I don't know. I, like I said, I just have not seen any reason not to run it. So that's the way I think it, I'll be testing the games going forward. Um, I can run some of these games without frame generation as well, uh, but that's what I believe is the best way to benchmark it because that's the way I think most gamers are gonna benchmark it and that's what I wanna focus on. Um, all right. Let's do the benchmark. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that the built-in tool doesn't seem to be adding up the frame rates correctly. So we're going to be using our uh, MSI Afterburner benchmark frame rate 
averages for this test. Um, I imagine the Dying Light update will fix that. Okay. All right, so here we go. We're getting our averages, we're averaging 143. You can see that in Dying Light, they're saying that we're only averaging a little over 60, like 65 FPS, which is obviously not true. So yeah, it is, something's messed up with the way they're calculating their frame rate, probably not counting the frame generation frames or something would be my guess. Um, but uh, you can see our temps are excellent. They're not spiking up. We're pulling over 200 and something watts here between the two, like 230, 240. Um, yeah, 250 almost right there. Uh, and we're getting 100% GPU utilization, 134 FPS, 131 FPS so far, 49 for our 1% lows. Uh, like I said, I played this for about an hour this morning and it was a great experience even with frame generation on. I picked 64 gigs of RAM over the, the 4090. Is that a bad idea? I would definitely go with a 4090 with 32 gigs of RAM. That would be a better upgrade in my opinion. Um, is this undervolted CPU? Yes, minus 30 undervolt on the CPU. I think it's ending here soon. But you can see our frame rate is averaging 135 with ray tracing on ultra, DLSS on quality, it's fantastic. I mean, it's a great experience, maxed out at QHD 16 by 10. I mean, yeah, it's fantastic. So 138.45 for our Dying Light 2 bench. And bingo and... Uh, we're just gonna assume any game that has frame generation is on, okay? But I'll go ahead and do a non-frame generation test as well here, just so people can see what that's like. So frame generation off. All right, let's run that benchmark. Temps are looking great, I know. The temps on this game Phenomenal. And with the SCAR 18, I mean, the temps in general on the SCAR 18 have been great on the GPU. Sometimes the CPU gets a little bit toasty, like in Hogwarts. When, I mean, this thing was pushing like 260 watts through the CPU and GPU together in Hogsmeade. And uh, yeah, it was pretty insane. Whoa. Our frame generation being off? Is it actually off? Because we're getting... The same FPS. I'm gonna need to double check the settings. That maybe I didn't save it, because our our same FPS, I believe there. Or maybe something funky is going on too. It could be something funky. This is this is the first time I've used this. So yeah, it did not save. You gotta press X to save them. Okay, now Z. All right, let's try again. Is there a benchmark comparison list for all the laptops you tested? Uh, yeah, uh, Dawood Albarki, that's a great question. I hope I didn't, I probably just brutalized your name. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> it was not intentional if I brutalized your, uh, your last name, my friend. I'm so sorry. Uh, okay, uh, window capture. Yes, okay, so this list is, there's a link down below. There are benchmarks on this list. It's to the right over here. You can see that there's uh, three game benchmarks, Time Spy and Cinebench for a bunch of laptops now. And we're gonna constantly be adding more and more of, the, of them. Um, and I just realized I need to restart this because I got distracted showing that list. So uh, you, can, you can use that list to, uh, to shop around, compare. There's links to buy. And uh, if you do use the links to buy, it does help support me as a content creator. So thank you very much for the support. But as always, no pressure to buy anything. So frame generation is still on. I don't know why frame generation is not turning off. 
Let me try restarting the game now. I, I, I really want to move through these games quickly. So this is the last attempt to turn frame generation off. If it doesn't turn off, let's move on to the next game. Eighty millivolt undervolt should be okay. Yeah, I would think so, but uh, Albar Albarki is a cool name. Um, any eighteen inch L LG grams? Wish there were some lightweight laptops with big screens for those of us that don't game. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm not. I'm just focusing on the gaming laptop sector, so. Okay, so frame generation is supposed to be off. We restarted the game. Hopefully now it's staying off. There is, it's called a MacBook. I don't think there's an 18 inch MacBook though. All right, so I'm gonna try to make sure I hit the benchmark begin. And this will be interesting to see if the frame rate is different with and without frame generation. It should be noticeably less, right? Okay, so there we have noticeably reduced frames. The good, okay, so confused. Like why is the frame rate the same with and without frame generation? Um, so, I mean, if you're paying attention when you're benchmarking, you'll notice something like this. Right now we're only averaging 90 FPS. Um, and we were, of course, averaging like 135 or something like that. So frame generation is giving us a big FPS boost in this game. And um, again, it's something that I would, I would utilize. How much stronger is the 4090 versus the 4080? Uh, Lurax, we're, we're going to be basically seeing some of that performance today because uh, we'll be doing some of the same benchmarks that I've been doing with the RTX 4080 and the Strix G18. So I would say expect, expect to see some actual performance here. Uh, but in general, I would expect between 10, 10 to 20% in that range, maybe 10 to 25% between like a middle, well, it could be as high as 30, 40, 50% if it's a low wattage 4080 versus a high wattage best performance 4090. But uh, it's gonna depend a lot on the build. Would you actually bring these 18 inch laptops out, uh, out to places like coffee shops or workplaces? Oh yeah, why wouldn't you? These things are the same size as the 17 inch laptops of the past or very similar. Um, they fit in a backpack just fine. It's just a bigger display that's on the same size chassis. This is actually a smaller chassis than my old Aorus X7, so. Okay, so. Uh, right. So we got 96, 80, wow, our 1%, our 1% lows are extremely low, are extremely high. That is excellent 1% lows, which is interesting. Um, I want to see the very end of the, of that benchmark. I'm checking the live stream. The exact amount at the end there. It was 91. So 91.57 is what our 1% lows and everything was. Um, okay. So 91.57. Uh, I, I guess I'll put it in here. Ninety-one fifty-seven. So ninety-one FPS average versus one thirty-eight with frame generation. On to the next game. Let's go. Wee! What do you think about liquid cool tong fangs? I think they look pretty freaking sick, and I've got hands-on one. I've got one. In the room next to me, we'll be doing a test on it here eventually. So Dead Space is next. Let's go. 
Um, I think the biggest downside to the liquid cooled XMG Neo and uh, similar laptops is um, you really want to be using the liquid cooler a lot. It's a much better experience because it's a quieter overall system and the performance is much higher. I feel like when you compare just air cooled laptop to air cooled laptop, it's not as attractive to me. So if you go with an XMG Neo or a uh, similar laptop, basically I would say plan to ha get that liquid cooler because it's gonna make your it's gonna make your experience much better. Ah, uh, malevolent ran with a ten dollar super chat. Time to add Returnal PC port to the benchmark suite. It has a benchmark built in that's top of the class. Interesting. Well, I'm focusing on... Thank you so much for the support. And I appreciate the suggestion. I will look into it. Not guaranteeing I'm going to add it. Uh, but I will consider it. The main thing for me is I want... Uh, I want games that are just super popular. That people are interested in seeing the results in and that they're going to search the internet for. So I'm not sure. If Returnal is a very popular game, then I will definitely consider it. I'm definitely looking for adding, looking to add more games. Okay, so this is the area we're going to do our benchmark. I want to point out the insane wattage pull. We're doing 160 and 110. So pretty, pretty consistently pulling about 270 watts through this system right now. That is insane. Absolutely insane. Our, our CPU temp is also going above 90 now. This game is pulling... Some, this game and Hogwarts are pulling the craziest uh, TDP pulls that I've ever seen in a game. Um, so, but geez, look at the, the CPU temp is really... It's pushing it up there. Rationalist face. I wish they had sold custom-made foam dams for liquid metal for those of us that are a little clumsy. Can I use an RTX 4090 laptop with an external 4K display? I've never found any answer. Yes, you absolutely can. Uh, yep, that is not a problem. They can go out through USB-C or a mini display port or Thunderbolt 4 port, and it works great. I was playing Hogwarts on my 4K projector the other night. Okay, so here we are. We're ready to do our bench. Walking. So this has no frame generation, DLSS on quality, everything else on ultra right now. Lurax with the one uh, euro donation. Thank you so much. Yeah. Do I notice any input lag with frame generation? Uh, Dawood, yes. I do think there's a little bit of input lag with frame generation, uh, but it would only be noticeable in a hyper-competitive shooter like... Um, it would be noticeably worse in a hyper-competitive shooter like Apex Legends. Like, I would never use frame gen on Apex Legends, but I would use it on a game like Dying Light 2 because it's a single player. And it's more about... I would rather have a smoother, higher frame rate experience in Dying Light 2. So we got 112.58. That's awesome. I'm very curious what we got on... On twelve fifty-eight. All right. So that's fantastic. I mean, this is obviously running really, really well. I'm curious, what did what did we get on the scar? Let's find out what we got on the previous. Wait. Oh, are we? Oh no, we've got the wrong thumbnail right now for our, what? The live stream didn't get updated. This is supposed to be, hold on, let me change the, let me change the, uh... let me change the title real quick guys and the thumbnail. Um... Benchmarks. Let's 
two, and more. All right, and I don't know why the thumbnail didn't get updated. I, I swear I, I did it, but <laughs> apparently it didn't, it didn't change. Okay, now uh, the title and thumbnail should be correct. Rationalist Space with a $20 uh, donation. Thank you so much, man. Uh, he says, thanks, man. This little, uh, thank you should cover a key on the keyboard. You save a lot of money since it's so hard to test these machines without buying them. No micro center in Seattle. Gotcha. Well, thanks so much for the, uh, the donation, man. It's, it's, I really appreciate it. Okay, so there's, there's our Dead Space 2 benchmark. Um, but before we move on, let's check our results for the SCAR. Actually, it should be in this video. We should be able to see the Strix G18. Okay. One and uh, let's go to Dead Space. So we're going to turn off DLSS now. Wow, look at that temperatures, but 12, DLSS, 12 FPS. Interesting. That's so interesting. Um, the Strix G18 got 99 FPS. The the M16 got 113, which is almost the exact same as what we got. <laughs> Makes me want to test this one more time. Just to verify the results. I mean, we're getting basically 112 this whole time right now. So interesting. Okay. So maybe, so I guess that could indicate that this game is CPU bound in this area. I don't know. It probably is. I mean, look at the wattage we're pulling on the CPU. It's crazy. It's really high end uh, wattages. And we're pulling, look at our gigahertz. See, we're pulling 5.1, 4.9. So that means that, yeah, this is definitely more of a CPU bound area. So again, uh, you know, a laptop like the GT Titan, GT77 Titan with undervolting and overclocked TDPs could push even higher frames in this, in this game. Very interesting. Okay, on to the next game. Ah, what is it? Warzone 2. Okay, so this is a game I've not loaded up on, the, on this. I've downloaded it, but I haven't loaded it, so I hope we don't run into any problems. What's up, nerdy? Been a little while. Uh, welcome back to the stream. Uh, it says the same if you had 20 MS and 60 FPS. Frame Gen makes it 120. It will stay. Strix G18 for this price is the best. Frame the, this frame generation is completely cryptic to me. I don't get when you'd want it and when not. Basically, whenever you want optimal... Um, whenever you want optimal response rate, you want to turn frame generation off. If you want to have the best, smoothest experience, that's when you want to put frame generation on. Um, okay. So... We're seeing if we can get into Warzone 2 here. Like I said, it's the first time I've tried loading in, so. Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2. Ooh, it's gonna make me, ooh. It's gonna make me want to add a phone number, which I wanna make sure. <laughs> I might have to change the account to my main account on here to be able to get in this game. Uh, hold on, y'all. Okay, yeah, we're on the right one, cool. Hmm, <laughs> Oh, I can't do that. 
Okay. All right, gotta authenticate here. We'll get this. We will get this figured out. I know a lot of people want to see Modern Warfare 2 Warzone here. Let's see here. All right. Oh, I think I just remembered. I might have a different account, actually. We'll have to see. We'll get in this. Don't worry. I'm going to try this account first, but I should have got this figured out before the stream. Next time I will try to do that. I'm logged in. Yeah, I think it's my other account actually. So we're gonna try my other one. All right, we are logged into that one now, let's see. Bingo. Now this one should have a phone number attached to the account. Let's go. Okay. <sighs> Nerdy says, I've never touched. I swear I added the phone number to this account. Let's see, where do I where do I do? I'm gonna go ahead and just try to make sure that I've got a phone number attached. Okay, just making sure. It says it's already in use for another account. <laughs> All right, we're trying the other account again. We'll get this figured out, don't worry. Actually, I don't know that we will because it says it's in both of my accounts. It already says it's for another one. Oh, I remember now. I remember the account. I have I have four freaking Blizzard accounts. That's right. Because they tried, they banned. See, they had banned my one of my accounts and they unbanned it. And I had to create another one. And then one of the accounts got hacked. I had to create another one. So... This is crazy town. We're getting it though. It's been a long time since I've logged into this account. It's been a couple of years probably since I used, used uh, Blizzard.
All right. But my phone number ended up going onto this like side account. So that's why the that's why it's we're getting this confusion here. Okay, uh, Activision does shadow ban when connecting from a new machine or a new account. All right. Switch to our Modern Warfare 2. Play. All right, let's go, come on, let me load. No Microsoft Flight Simulator, thumb down. No, we're doing that one, is it not on the list? Maybe I just forgot to put it on the list, but it's I downloaded it. Yeah, it's there. It's right underneath the Apex Legends. Don't thumbs down it for no reason. That should be like five thumbs up. For one false down. I don't know. So whatever. I'm not worried about it. All right. Oh, we're in game. We are in game. Hurrah. Now, the question is, what's the best way to benchmark this sucker? I don't think I'll be benchmarking it regularly in all the laptops, so we'll probably just play a match or two. Give it like five, ten minutes of gameplay, depending on how long it lasts. I'll run around, run around the maps. Is there not a way to skip this intro? I guess not. None of the buttons work. Oh, wow. I read that so fast. Okay. Wow. That is a... What? The, that is a lot of things you have to agree to. Um, I want to use things as much as possible... Uh, okay, we have to restart it now. <laughs> I want to use as many default settings as I can in this game. Just set it to the highest settings and run it, run it like that if I can. When is an OLED 18 inch panel coming? I have no idea, but it'll probably come eventually. Maybe. The mini LED ones, I, from what I, feedback I've gotten is that they're just easier for, to produce and create slash add. So that's why I have them. Rationalist says, I used to run on min settings to get max FPS. That's true. I usually test esports titles that way. So maybe we should test it at that at that setting. Cuz that's that's the way people actually will, I, like I said I always want my test to be as realistic as is possible. Usually full resolution, highest refresh rate, but usually lower settings to optimize response rate. So what kind of options do we have? We don't want recommended. Should we do minimum? It is set to DLSS, but I don't see where it's on balanced. Okay, so we're gonna do minimum DLSS on quality, 16 by 10. Does that sound good, everyone? Like that's the way probably I would do it. We would want motion blurs off. The weapon motion blur is fine. I just want default settings. I don't want to have to remember as many things to change. I would usually probably set texture resolution to also high, but we'll just keep it minimum DLSS on quality, QHD. Let's do that. All right. 
Everything else is default. So uh, we're going to be doing just the DMZ, right? Resurgence, quads, infected. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the one we're going to want to do. Oh, we get to pick our. That's cool. We'll go to we'll go to this one. If you run cheats that are consumed twenty to thirty FPS, that's definitely not worth it. That's not going to help you. You're going to not gonna be able to shoot people. We're losing that much FPS. <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry, checking more chat questions. All right, can you please play Elden Ring? Uh, Said, it's on the checklist. We'll make sure that it runs at 60 FPS nonstop, maxing out with the settings. It should run, no problem. How is the Strix G18's quality? I'm not sure what you mean, David. You'll have to be more specific. Uh, should I get an M16? How is its build quality? I think you're talking about build quality then. Um... I think the build quality is pretty good on both. I would say the M16's build quality is a little bit better. Asus Tough A15 3060 versus Katana GF66. That's too specific. Okay. So my, uh, unfortunately, my camera overheated there. I'm going to try to point a fan up at it. Will Valorant hold 240 FPS on the G18? Not sure. We'll have to see. If it holds it, if the if it holds 240 FPS on. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and just run around and. Whoa. Okay, my mouse sensitivity is way too high. Let's try that. That should be pretty good. We killed an AFK person. Oh, crap. <laughs> okay. How do I load my G? Okay. We need to load in our plates. Let me turn up the... I'll turn up the sound so you guys can hear the sound a little better. So, very smooth gameplay, 164. DMZ's packed with AI. Yeah, I figured these guys weren't real players the way they were running around. I should probably stay near my teammates, though. Is there something over here? I see a waypoint to something. I don't know what these, uh, how this works with. This is the first time I've played this game. Uh oh. So, it's a pretty, it's a, it's very, very reminiscent of Warzone. 
the previous game. How does the keyboard feel? Vents next to hand mouse. The keyboard feels amazing. There's no heat at all on the keyboard. Wow, they, people are so durable in this game. Really gotta focus on the headshots. There we go. Okay. I only have six shots left right now. How do I get more ammo? <laughs> uh, maybe switch weapons? Okay. I have 30 bullets in this one. Test? Okay. Yeah, audio should be good. Oh, I have a secondary gun. It's a shotgun, though. Should probably switch this out for another long range gun. Oh, this is a burst. All right, let's go with this guy for a little bit. Oh, someone's shooting at me. Up on the hill. Oh crap. Let's try this gun out. Oh, this is a shotgun too. Okay, we don't want that. Let me check chat here. The name of the FPS overlay is uh, Afterburner. MSI Afterburner. Oh, they got us. Come on, teammate. You can do this. Oh, they're both. We're both down. It's not good. We're dead, y'all. We're dead. Ho! Oh, there's a big mama jama behind us. Okay, well, this works really well. We're basically... I think we're CPU bound in this game. Notice how high our, our CPU wattage is at 130. Um, and 5.1 gigahertz... Very high CPU temps, but our frame rates are fantastic. Our 1% lows are really, really great. Um, so if you're looking for a great uh, Warzone 2 laptop, this should be a really good one. Okay. Got any information about you can put out in the second SSD in the Acer Predator Helios 18? I'm not sure. Um, can you do League of Legends? We're doing that. Look at the list of games that we're benchmarking. You can see the list of games in the top left. Um, 
Our goal is to get through all of those. So that's why we got to keep through, moving through these. I'm going to try to exit this game and move on to the next game. Uh, so next is Overwatch 2. Hopefully we can play that. Now, I've not played Overwatch 2 yet. I played a lot of Overwatch 1. And I really enjoyed that. But uh, Overwatch 2 is new. It's been a few months old now, I think. Mm -hmm. What? I guess I have to log in again. All right. Yeah. I think we're logging in. Server connection failed. Now, okay, now it found it. Interesting. Play lo Lover Watch. What? I like the menu changes. The menu changes look good. Uh, let's check our settings before we go into a game. All right, so this is a game I think we're gonna be able to do max settings. Uh, we don't want, we don't want any downscaling, definitely. Frame rate, desired frame rate. We just want to push that up as high as we can, see what we get. NVIDIA reflex, I would typically turn that on. Quality settings, we'll just try everything on the ultra. Um, basically FSR 1.0 or no. What do you guys think? Should we do FSR? I feel like we should not put that on. Um, okay, so we're doing ultra preset, render scaling to 100%, desired frame rate, we're maxing it out to 600, 16 by 10, NVIDIA Reflex, I think these are good settings. We just hit apply. Let's go ahead and see what we get. Do unranked quick play. Where can I buy this laptop? Great question. If you're looking to buy the laptop, you can go to uh, this list right here. It's a link in the description. There's gonna be links to every single laptop with an RTX 40,000. And uh, yeah, it's got, it's going to be a comprehensive list of where you can buy anything. So we'll try to go into a practice range. Initially here. Okay, well, we're in the game now, so. Okay, should we do Hanzo? Let's do uh, Soldier 76. Ooh, sensitivity too high. Uh, I guess we're going to turn it down because people are swearing at us. <laughs> um, okay. Mouse sensitivity. Okay. We're going to drop this down to like 4%. 3%. We'll do 3%. Okay. That looks pretty good. Uh, I'll turn the sound up just a little bit. Okay. All right, so here we go. And just check chat here. Does it have links for the UK? Uh, not yet, but we are about to add that actually. Oh shit, we got Genji going after us. Who is this? I don't know these, I'm gonna die a lot. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know these characters. Hey Gizmo, did you open your Blade 18? Not yet. Um, I have not. And I did not experience any flickering issues on my Blade 16. So it might just be, be related to the Blade uh, 18. I don't know. We'll have to see.
I don't think I should be hitting that guy. Oh yeah, I can right click to do rockets, that's right. I really need to heal. Ooh, wow, well, you gotta watch out for that guy. I don't like that. Ooh, did we get a kill? That guy was so close to dying. Oh, come on. I'm probably not gonna get any kills until, uh, I'm probably not gonna get any kills until I get my uh, ultimate. I can do like double damage, I think, with seven, Soldier 76. Any coil wine? Uh, I talked about this several times in the stream so far. Um, I have not noticed much minor coil wine, um, but very minimal. So uh, just looking at our, let's set our averages. I haven't run the average. Oh, he, oh my gosh. Yeah, we killed one. Yeah, finally someone died. Jeez, no one dies in this game. It's crazy. I keep dying. I'm the only one dying in this game. Uh. Uh. <laughs> we're 75% up on our ultimate. So we're averaging 250 FPS, 146 for our 1% lows. It's very good performance for everything on ultimate uh, performance settings. Oh, we broke we broke free forward. Oh, Hanzo's gonna die. He died, right? Oh, yeah, I'm not missing anything now. This guy's gonna die, right? Yeah! Yeah! Oh, we got a couple kills finally. Oh, geez, that took forever. <laughs> okay, the CPU on this is very hot. This is another CPU bound game. Ooh, they got us. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to play this round out and then that'll be our Overwatch 2 gameplay. Ooh, he got me with a headshot with his bow. Laptop CPUs are made to withstand those temps. That's correct. Um, and I've not had an issue with laptops failing me like that. So these guys, gotta wait for our teammates to come back. <laughs> Everyone go forward. I'm not a tank, I can't be in the front lines. Oh, there was a guy right next to me, I didn't realize. So, I mean, I, this would be a great experience. I love that we're getting over 240 FPS on average. Um, our 1% lows aren't quite there, but it's basically perfect performance. When does Hello on the Scar series? No, it's not. Really shouldn't be focusing him. Uh-oh, I'm dead again. <laughs> oh, my gosh. How often do I update the list? Every day. I have two people helping me update the list. Does laptop heat bother me when, like, uh, my hands on the keyboard? No, this is a very... This is a very reasonable temperature. Very comfortable for gaming long-term on the SCAR 18 here. Oh. 
Okay, I helped kill one person. Finally. Like, no one was dying on their side for so long. Oh, that's Anna. We should try to kill her. Yeah, we got her. That's going to help us push. I really should focus their DPS in the back line. We got them all, right? Oh my gosh. This game is so insane. I should pull back a little. Oh no, Hans Olt got me. Okay, uh, we're just gonna exit this game. That was great. Great experience in Overwatch. I think people will love playing that game for sure. That was a great experience. Okay. Um, so Overwatch for our FPS, let me go back and review. Near the end after that match, what was our average? Basically 260 for Overwatch. So I need to update my uh, Warzone score as well. 260 with uh, 158 for a 1% lows. Warzone 2, going back. We average 157 and 101. Okay, next up is Cyberpunk 2077. Let's go. Okay. Uh, have you ever different, tested the battery life difference between Optimus and Discrete Graphics card? It's a big difference. Um, yeah, I've tested that. Um, you know, with a Discrete Graphics card running just on minimal settings, you're going to get like two hours or something, uh, give or take. And then with just integrated graphics, I'm talking about in gameplay. Inside of gameplay, it would be like an hour, hour and 15 minutes, typically. But I'm talking about just general web browsing. It's terrible. You don't want to use a discrete graphics card. You want to use integrated graphics. Palm rest is not too hot. No, palm rest is nice and good temperature. Yep. WASD keys have just a little bit of warmth, but barely any. Um, this is a great, a great palm rest experience for playing on the laptop itself. Is this max settings? So uh, soon name, if you want to see exactly what settings I used, please go back a little bit in the live stream. You can see them. Basically, it's ultra settings with no scaling at QHD. Yeah, so basically max settings. But it's basically a CPU-bound game anyway, so it's not going to make too much of a difference, I don't think, turning down the settings. Okay, so we're doing QHD. We're going to be doing quality... DLSS, everything else on Ultra. There we go. We're going to have to set this. I'm, gonna set, I'm just going to make sure everything is set correct. All right. And we're just going to do this twice. I want to make sure it's on quality. Okay. All right. And as you can see, we're on full screen QHD+. Plus. Let's go ahead and run the benchmark. See what we get in Cyberpunk 2077. Let's go. So this is with frame generation on, I believe. Let me double check, make sure it's frame generation on, but I want to test it with frame generation enabled. And
105 FPS. Okay, so um, the Strix G18 got 102, and the Emilyware M16 got 101 in this test at these exact settings. So we'll have to see what we get with the SCAR 18. Notice our insane draw here. We're pulling like 260, 270 watts. In CPU-centric games, it's absolutely crazy the amount of watts we're pulling in laptops like this. And it shows you how important it is to have a high power CPU in your gaming laptop. There are several games so far today that have been like that. So we got 116.25. That's with frame generation. And uh, so compared to 101 on the Alienware M16 and 102 on the Strix G18, uh, that's a 14 FPS gain and right around 13%, 13 or 14% increase for this over the Strix G18. So not a huge jump, but keep in mind, this is not the most powerful RTX 4090 that money can buy. Um, like the MSI GT77, uh, I did this same test and I think it was like 125 or something like that. 126, I think. So, pretty interesting. We'll do no frame generation one more time. So, no frame generation. All the other settings are exactly the same. We'll let it go. Sixteen. So in Cyberpunk, we got 116 slash 46. Um, so as you can see, frame generation really gives us a lot of FPS in this game. Todoroki says, it's sad how every year battery life on gaming laptops gets worse. Hopefully AMD saves us. Yeah, uh, I don't know if it gets worse necessarily, but I think the whole push for more cores um, has basically, in Intel at least, has, that's what's basically making things a little bit less efficient. Um, I definitely would have hoped that we'd have better performance with our e-cores, but I don't know. So is the 4090 even worth the price jump from a 4080? That's a very personal choice. If you've got a budget, I would say stick to the 4080. If you've got the extra money, the 4090 is going to probably be worth it because of the increased VRAM. Okay, so we got 68.52 with no frame generation. And uh, yeah, so in general, I think the jump from a 4080 to 4090 from the Strix G18 to the, to the 4090 on the SCAR is not a huge one. And uh, it's not that important, but the VRAM upgrade from 12 to 16 gigs is more important. And I think uh, you're going to have less bottlenecking and more future proofing. Oh, we lost the camera. Ooh. I'm not sure how far into the benchmark you guys saw that. I'll need to redo that one if, uh, let me check the live. I think for most people, the 4080 is the better choice. Okay, you guys got to see the results of that. That's good. All right, so uh, moving on to the next game. Uh, Fortnite. Ooh, Fortnite. Okay. been a little while since I ran a uh, been a little while since I ran a Fortnite benchmark and I haven't tested any RTX 4000 series laptops yet with Fortnite so it's going to be interesting to see the results uh, 
Uh, I think it's very unlikely, but do you think you'll ever do a test for VR? Uh, Max Mini Mixer, I have done a bunch of tests for VR. I'm a big VR enthusiast. You've got the Pimax 8KX behind me here. I also have a Quest 2 behind me over that side. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll probably do a, a, a VR benchmark, like our RTX 4000 series laptops VR benchmark. Um, so, but it's just, it's not a high priority because not as many people want to see that, but I'll do that eventually. I hope if I have time, I'll do it. Maybe do a live stream testing like one of the laptops. If you play 1080p in esports games, will there be a bottleneck? Uh, yeah, usually CPU bound. In most esports games, you're going to be CPU bound even at QHD resolution. Chwam, chwam. I like that how they have the uh, Geralt from The Witcher in Fortnite now. It's crazy. The level of collaborations they do, the F Epic Games does, is next level. Okay. Let's see what the default settings were that they gave us, but we'll probably not use them. I just want to go full screen, 16 by 10, VSync off. We're going to raise the max cap FPS to unlimited. And... Uh, as you guys know, we're going to set everything to low, which is what players are going to actually want to play at. And then we'll probably do DLSS on quality. And we want textures on epic. That's fine. But everything else we want low because that this is a competitive shooter. You're not going to want to play this at high settings. I mean, you could, but... You're, not, you're probably not even going to get the 240 hertz refresh rate. Okay. And I mean, the game still looks good on low. So if I lock it to 240 FPS, will it bottleneck stop or no? Uh, no, because then you're just bottlenecking artificially with an FPS cap. Okay. Let's go. Hop in solo. So, it's been so long since I have played this game. I don't, I don't, I don't even know if all the hotkeys are mapped anymore <laughs> or what they would be. Um, I hope the settings apply because I'm seeing a 120 FPS cap right now. Maybe that's just in the menu. We'll see. Inside the game, hopefully we're pushing over 200 FPS. I would expect that as a minimum. Okay, so we're doing 260 right here at the start of the open world environment. So shift is sprint, put your gun away. Accuse, build a wall, ramp, V is to do a dome, X, okay. And then, okay, so I did play Fortnite for a hot minute. But I never was super good at it, I was okay. Okay. Okay, so we got our average going up here now. In Fortnite, we're doing 120 watts on the CPU, 125. Wow. Uh, let's go land um, on that island. Let's go. Fortnite no build mode is the best. Ooh, that's an interesting idea. So we are getting some 1% low stutters, especially as we load into the map area. Averaging 252 FPS so far.
We'll go over here. It doesn't look like there's anything here, but maybe we can go fishing. All right, let's go fishing. Yeah, we're fishing. <laughs> yeah, we caught something. What did we get? A shield fish. What else can we get? Can we get a gun out of this? I think we can get a gun, right? Woo, we got a gun. All right, so let's go kill someone now. All right, where? Oh, we got someone. Let's go. <laughs> oh, I can't believe we killed someone. Like, we got the fish. We fished them. We fished a gun just in time. Oh, we got someone else. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the no build does seem like it would be more fun to me as well. Because I'm tired of people just running away from me, you know? And then hiding behind stuff. Like... Okay, so I heard someone fighting over here. Woohoo! Let me turn to the sound. Let me see if I can hear directional. Okay, I think he's coming from the right. Yeah, I can kind of hear directional audio. I think that's another player. Let's go! Oh crap. No! <laughs> Do you know how to stop the bottleneck? So Danis, Antov, the way bottlenecking works is Basically, uh, basically, all right, so I forgot to get, okay, I gotta go back, look at our FPS average. So, looks like we averaged 200 and, 291, okay, 291.55 for our FPS average. That's awesome. So Fortnite is obviously gonna run really well. A game like Fortnite, Overwatch, Apex Legends, oftentimes they're just bottlenecked by the CPU's raw performance in single or dual core loads. They're not multi-threaded enabled very well. And it's just all about how uh, much wattage you can put through it, how efficiently it can run, what the overall clock speed is that you can put it up to. Um, and then also your memory speed can sometimes impact performance in CPU bound games. Uh, it depends on the game if it's memory sensitive or not. Um, so yeah, basically what you want is the highest end CPU you can get, uh, or at least a very high end one that can go to a high clock speed and then fast memory and a high TDP on that CPU when under a dual load. So this, this ran really, really great, you know, pushing over 125 watts to the CPU to push out consistent high end frames. Um, the 1% low wasn't amazing, but it wasn't very stuttery for me. It played very smoothly. So. Yeah, Valorant and uh, League of Legends will also bottleneck, uh, CPU bottleneck. So. The only way you're going to go uh, get off the CPU bottleneck is by really increasing your GPU demand um, by upping the settings and then you're basically gonna end up with lower frame rates anyway because you're just, then you become GPU bound and that's not what you want either. So, but it may be okay to turn some of the GPU settings up if like you're all entirely CPU bound. You could turn GPU settings up and you won't hurt your frame rates very much. Um, but if you usually set your GPU settings to maximum or all the graphical settings to maximum, then there'll be parts of the game in those esports titles where you're GPU bound and parts of the game where you're CPU bound. 
It depends on the game. That's the way it is in Apex Legends. But um, games like Valorant and uh, games like Valorant may just be CPU bound no matter what, even on maximum settings. So it depends on the game. Okay. So we're going to do... Our resolution is 2560 by 1600. 240 hertz, no V-Sync, no refresh rate limit. Our, we're gonna apply that, yep. And so we're good there. We're going to go to ultra settings. DLSS on quality. So we want ray tracing on ultra, DLSS on quality. What's been the quietest laptop I've reviewed so far? Uh, well, you have to you have to understand that it's all about uh, performance versus noise trade-offs, and something like the Scar 18 and G18 are going to be excellent noise to performance trade-offs. Something like the Blade 16 is also pretty good noise trade-off. I would say the Blade 16 is the quietest, but you're also getting less performance at the same time. So you could probably match the performance of the Blade 16 at about the same fan levels with the Scar. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. So here's the Watch Dogs Legion. Um, yeah, water-cooled models. That would be, I guess that would be the quietest, yes. But out of air-cooled, air it's going to all depend on how you tune it and how whistly and noisy the fans are, really. Um, all right, so we're on ultra settings, ray tracing on, DLSS on quality. Let's see what we get. If let me know if the audio is out of sync. The camera keeps overheating. I've got a fan blowing on it, but it's not enough. If I turn on DLSS, will it make the CPU drain more wattage? Uh, it depends. That's a good question. Sometimes DLSS does take CPU resources up, and it may actually hurt your frame rate, but maybe not. It depends. But yeah, if you want the quietest laptop at home than the water-cooled XMG Neo will probably be the the quietest, highest performance, but pretty much all gaming laptops can at least go to a moderately quiet or almost silent mode and still play games at a high frame rate, but you are going to sacrifice performance every time you do that, pretty much, except for the water-cooled one where you have just a little bit of fan noise and it's, it's good. All right, so a bit out of sync. All right, I'm going to reset the mic. Okay, let me know if that's better. Hopefully that is better. Okay, so we got um, 86 FPS average with 63% for R, 1% low. That's, that's pretty good. Uh, I can't remember what the G18 got, but um, yeah. Let's do one more test with uh, no ray tracing and no DLSS. Just everything on ultra. I know some people want to see these tests. Make sure those setting changes held. Cool. All right. Uh, so no ray tracing, no DLSS. Let's see what we get for our just raw test. Perfection. That's good. Uh, can we also do DLSS quality with no ray tracing? I don't know if we'll, well, I guess we could, but... I feel like I feel like this is a good enough test for you guys, so you can get the native, no DLSS or, or ray tracing. So just to clarify one more time, this is everything on Ultra, no DLSS, no frame generation, there's no frame generation in this game, um, and no ray tracing either. 
Wow says, never heard of a water-cooled laptop before. So you can check my uh, live streams and my videos. I made videos on the uh, XMG Neo 16, and I'll have some videos coming up on them too, so stay tuned. Um, but I did do an overview of it on the main channel. Just look for, uh, the thumbnail says, for RTX 4090 overclocked. What's the TGP of this laptop? 175. But under a dual load like this, notice that we're pulling like, whoa, 285 right there. <laughs> but typically under a dual load like this, we're gonna be doing more like 160, 150 on the GPU uh, and a high amount of wattage on the CPU. So it just depends. E-Electronics makes a water-cooled laptop. Yeah, it's the same as the XMG Neo. It's the same thing. I think also PC Specialist is another one, another option. It's all the same laptop. It's a Tong Feng chassis, basically. Uh, but different brands sell them, basically. All right, so average FPS is 102. Minimum is 28. All right. I think that's good for that game. Let's go. Oh, I got to put it into the average FPS here. And uh, what's the next game? Red Dead Redemption. I'm going to get that loading up. So... Let's get Red Dead loading. And let me get these averages onto the... Calculate it up. So 86, 63. For Watch Dogs Legion. 86, 53. Yeah, I really need to figure out a way to keep the machine, the laptop cool, or the, the camera cool, because it's got basically a constant overheating issue right now. Um, it's the Sony A7S III. Maybe I just got to get a, a fan, dedicated fan, just blowing on it all the time. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's hard because the laptop exhaust is also kind of blowing backwards towards the camera so it's kind of making that whole area warm a little bit warmer so 92 fps so far it's a little bit lower fps in this section of the map if i remember correctly
do the red temperatures and thermal throttling warnings in HW info bother you? Is that completely normal and nothing to be worried about? Um, so I would say those don't really bother me that much um, unless they're causing stutters, you know? Um, because sometimes when CPUs thermal throttle, it can cause uh, 1% lows to be really struggling. Um, that would be my biggest response to that is focusing on the 1% low stutters. But um, in general, CPUs are designed to go all the way up to 99 degrees Celsius without damaging them. I just prefer to keep them more in like the 80s, mid 80s, you know, under 90 I, and I, I'm in the ideal world. Um, that way you never hit that 1% low stuttering. Um, but it depends because sometimes it doesn't really work out that way anyway. So like sometimes you don't really stutter uh, with, when you're hitting the thermal throttle. It depends on the game. A7S3 might have an option to change the auto power off temperature in the settings. It's like some other Sony's, maybe. One other thing about Asus laptops that make me cringe is the hinges. They look like they're always about to break. I don't think that the new ones seem that way. The, the, new, the new, especially the GE78 hinge looks really great. It's like the same design as that's on Asus this year. Um, if budget wasn't a current concern, which laptop would you get? Probably the GT77. Um, probably is what I would go for. Maybe the Blade 18. Also, maybe the MSI GE78. Uh, the SCAR 18 is also excellent. SCAR 16 is excellent. There's a lot of great laptops this year. It's, it really comes down to what your needs are. You know, Do you want something more portable? Not as portable? Because that changes things a lot. If you want something really portable and high performance, then probably something more like the G14 or Zephyrus M16 would be really great. Maybe the Alienware X16 might be an option as well. Um, 2K is used as a shorthand for 2560 monitor resolution. I would say 2K to me is more uh, 2000 by 1080p. I would say 2.5K is what I would say is QHD. But I can only afford a G18 for 2499. Then if your budget is 2499, I think the G18 is the best value bang for the buck in that price range right now. Though the M16 is also really good, so. If you want Windows Hello, the Alienware M16 is really good. Uh, better build quality on the M16 too. So more portable, full-size SD card slot and better ports on the M16. But um, just for value bang for the buck, the G18 is just a little cheaper and it's got a better quality display, so. All right, so there's our benchmark. 97.59 FPS. Beautiful. I guess 97.59 would be 98. And our minimum is 23. We're rounding up there. Beautiful, all right. So on to God of War. Let's see what we get. God of War is pretty intense. I'm biased towards non-gaming looking laptops. Gotcha. Well, if you do get a Strix or a Scar series, if you just disable the RGB, they don't really look like gaming laptops. They look just like a business laptop, black and gray. The Zephyrus line also can look very businessy. You just set the keyboard backlight to white and it looks like a business laptop. Most of them at least. You say the 4080 is going to be at least 50% faster than the 4070? Um, I don't know if it'll be that high. It's going to be high, though. It's going to be a big gap between the 4080 and 4070, but I don't know about 50%. 
Okay, so um, we're going to start off with always on Ultra. Everything's going to be on Ultra. And uh, we're going to do DLSS on quality, okay? And then we're going to switch to no DLSS. Yeah, the Scar, Strix, and Zephyrus, I think they all look pretty businessy if you just disable all the RGB. Ooh, it's so smooth. I love it. <laughs> okay, all right. So we're going to set our benchmark up here, right here in the corner. Okay, we're running through. Let's see what we get. 4070 is going to run out of VRAM. Uh, that entirely depends on the game. Like this God of War is only pulling um, 6.8 gigs, so you wouldn't run out of VRAM in this game. But you're a lot more likely to run out of VRAM, especially at QHD resolution. It's going to happen more often. Okay, so we got 116.53. If you do run out of VRAM, usually in almost all games, you can just turn, turn the, the textures down to, to medium or low or something. And in some games, you don't even notice the difference. In other games, you do. And it really depends on the game. Your mileage is going to vary a lot. But uh, yeah, in general, the higher amount of VRAM is one of the number one reasons I think people will want to go with a 4090 if they want to future-proof their gaming experience for a longer period of time. So no DLSS now. Let's see what we get. All right. Notice our GPU pull is like pretty much consistently like over 170. Oh, I was until I said that. <laughs> and now it's dropping down. It was over 170 for a while there though. Okay. All right, so we got 9541. On to CSGO. Let's see what we get. I'm interested to see if the 47 benchmarks and how much the memory bus cripples it, especially at QHD. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think it's hard to predict um, how the memory bus is going to work with the new ADA architecture. Am I using max fans on manual? Yes, I am. I think the thing I'm most disappointed is the battery life this year on all the Intel machines. Yeah. The AMD machines will definitely have better battery life. Almost almost for sure. I'm, we haven't verified that 100%, but even Lenovo is estimating like two hours more or something on their battery life or four hours. More. I can't remember how much it was. But there a noticeable increase in the battery life. All right, so we're going to turn on... All right, we're going to turn on our FPS counter. And we're going to verify our settings. We are in full screen. Everything's set to high, as it should be. 16 by 10. Let's go. Now in CS, we'll see how much the bottleneck does that play in this laptop. Uh, yeah, let's get a bottleneck, but it's going to be way higher than 240 FPS. So you're going to get great performance. I'm trying the Legion Pro 7i with 4080, actually. Okay. I think that's going to be a pretty good laptop, too. All right. And let's see what we get. So we're in the 500s, 600s on our FPS. Okay, if you don't plan on playing AAA video games on ultra settings, then what other possible reasons would you need an RTX 4080 or higher? Um, 
So other reasons would be like 3D rendering or modeling, video editing. The 4080 and 4090 can help uh, boost video render times dramatically in programs like uh, DaVinci Resolve. Um, potentially like crypto mining, probably not for most people though. Um, and then, I don't know, what other reasons would you want it? If you're a game developer, This FPS is like the 4080? Correct, because we're being CPU bottlenecked, basically. So there's almost no, if you just play CSGO, there's no point in getting an RTX 4090. All right, see you, Kenobi. I'll uh, see you in the next one, hopefully, or, or whenever you come back. Um, keep up the great work. Thank you, sir. I will try to do that. Brute forcing passwords and PowerShell. Who's doing that? Wildfire, are you doing that? Stop it. <laughs> All right, so things, uh, things that seem quite niche or specialized, right? So it's fair to see that more casual people don't need anything above 480.70 if they don't play AAA on Ultra. So I don't know, it's hard to say. Yeah, we need to do tests, but the VRAM is the biggest limiter. In some senses, I would almost recommend getting like a 40, a 4080 uh, RTX, or sorry, 3080. <laughs> over a 4070 because of the VRAM limitation, but not really, I don't know. It all comes down to pricing, really. Um, but for some people, it's gonna be potentially better in certain titles that are very VRAM demanding. Okay, so we got 513 at QHD and uh, QHD plus on high, 513. We don't know what our 1% lows are for this. All right. And I already tested at 1080p on the Strix, so we don't need to do that. Hogwarts Legacy, we're gonna do, um, still trying to decide where I wanna do my official benches. I'm thinking probably not in Hogsmeade because it's such a CPU bound area. Because there's so many NPCs there. I wish the Asus M16 had the 13900HX instead of the 13900H. Ah, yeah, that, that is important for like video ed editing and stuff like that, multi-core rendering. Yeah, if, like if all you play, uh, Dennis, is uh, if all you play is CPU-bound titles, like... Valorant, League of Legends, CSGO. Um, it's, you don't really need anything more than probably an RTX 4050, 4060, honestly. Because you're gonna be pushing 200 FPS even with those GPUs in those CPU bound games. Um, but games like Apex Legends, there's gonna be areas where it's gonna be uh, GPU bottlenecked. So, and obviously you're gonna be way more future proof for new games that come out if you get something that is uh, a higher end GPU, but it just all depends on what games you play. I have not done the Asus Zephyrus M16 testing yet. Okay, so uh, I'll go ahead and just run through this section one more time and then we'll go back to the Hogwarts area. All right. Okay, so we're definitely getting a lot of 1% uh, low stutters. All right, so just to review the settings right now. DLSS on quality. Frame generation is enabled. We do have RTX enabled. All right. Here we go. We're gonna run through Hogsmeade. This is the most CPU demanding area in the game that I've found. Wow, that was a big stutter. Um, this is a game that has a ton of textures. Like we're already pushing 13 gigs of textures. And um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. 
Uh, I wonder, are we being, are we even being VRAM limited right now? Let's try turning our textures on low. Let's just see. Let's try running, let's try running that again and seeing if our 1% our lows are a lot better or if we're still gonna get them. Cause there's other game optimizations that might cause uh, stuttering that we need to keep in mind. These temps are insane. They are, I think, I think they're really good given how much wattage is being pulled through the system. That's what I would say. All right, here we go. Let's try this again and see what our 1% lows are. Now that we have textures down lower, notice our VRAM right now is at nine gigs up here instead of 13. Um, you want to buffer before running out of VRAM space because it can, uh, otherwise, really you're starting to run out of VRAM as you get close to the 16 gigs, not at 16, like a couple gigs before that. So we may have been running out of VRAM. Yeah, our 1% lows are so much better. 37 now. So, okay, so we got 93, 90, 93.37. Um, pretty insane. Difference, just setting textures to low. And it's, <laughs> I don't know if I can tell the difference in the textures. How to fix game stuttering? Turn your textures to low would be the first thing I'd recommend to most people. Okay, so we need to go back. I'm tempted to sell my Clevo. Yeah, man, if you always want the best, yeah, this is pretty good, pretty good upgrade right now. Can you explain the bottleneck? Is it leg spiking or is it just limits the FPS because it cannot get more? So the 1% low stuttering in Hogwarts, it's different from game to game, but especially in Hogwarts, the stutters happen a lot because of the textures loading in. And if the, oh, wait, I was in the right section. Um, if you're in an area where there's lots of textures, then having your textures on high in Hogwarts can really cause severe stutters as the textures inside the buffer come in and out of the uh, VRAM. Because it, it can't process new frames until the, the textures are loaded in, so. Okay, so I think this is gonna be my official benchmark for Hogwarts, because it's not pushing as high a CPU. Um, there's so many NPCs in Hogsmeade that it's a bit unrealistic. Um, I think this is gonna be better a better representation of the performance in most of the game. It only leg spikes in texture games? No, it just depends on the game. Um, and that's also a dev optimization issue. Like, like, I don't think there's any excuse for them not having better texture management in this game, but. Okay, so we got 112.10. So still, still quite good. 112.10, and um, this is with ray tracing enabled. The, I guess this is with, I mean, uh, I guess the official one I've been doing is without ray tracing. But do I wanna do them with ray tracing or without ray tracing? Let's do it. Now that we've done it with ray tracing, let's turn the ray tracing off. And we gotta restart the game. All right. So no RTX 112. Oh, sorry, that was with RTX. And then we're gonna do no RTX. All right. Ten low is bad. I agree. Uh, that's just the nature of this game optimization. As you move through areas, you tend to get stutters in Hogwarts. Sadly. Um, I've even seen it on my desktop RTX 4090 with 24 gigs of VRAM. It still stutters. So I don't fault, I don't fault Asus or this laptop for that 1% low. Ray tracing is extremely leggy even on my desktop 4090. Yeah. Uh, Gadget Man said, did you get the game to play in full screen mode? I haven't really tried. I've been doing all my tests in borderless window mode, so I'm just gonna keep doing them in there so it's consistent. 
I usually like to put it in a full screen, but we'll just keep it in borderless window for now. Okay, so DLSS on quality, frame generation enabled, ray tracing disabled. Um, and if I was playing this game, this is probably how I would play it. I would turn it, I would turn ray tracing off. What new laptops would you recommend for VR? I would say um, for VR, you probably want, I haven't seen, I have not seen frame generation make that big a difference or sorry, frame generation being enabled or um, usable in VR yet. But um, obviously the very best for VR is going to be something like the MSI GT77 with a high power RTX 4090. Ideally you want a 4090 for VR. Let me know if it's up. <laughs> um. All right, so you guys can hear me, right? Can you hear me okay? This is the GH5 right now. And uh, I'm gonna use this as a backup. I'm gonna let my A7S just cool down for a minute. <laughs> and then I can switch back. Audio is going to be crappy for a minute, guys. We'll let it cool down for a couple minutes. All right. So uh, what I was saying was for VR, the very best is going to be an RTX 4090 with 16 gigs of VRAM if you can get it. You could also go for a 3080, um, 3080 or 3080 Ti with 16 gigs of VRAM, but VRAM is important for VR. Okay, so here we are. We're doing 180 so far. Our 1% low has been excellent now that ray tracing is off. Wonderful having any stutters going in here. Nope. Oh, we had stutters right as we got up to the stairs. <laughs> okay, so 172.15. All right. And uh, just for reference, with the RTX 4080 uh, and the M M18 and uh, Strix G18, I think we're doing 145 to 150 range. So 20, 20 to 25, 20, 20 27 uh, FPS higher with the RTX 4090 here. And uh, beautiful, I think that's good. So. Awesome. It's here. It is uh, time for control. I know it's bad sound. The sound will get better as soon as I get my camera back. I'm gonna let it cool down for just a few minutes here. I'll try turning it on again now. Okay, how's the sound now? Hopefully it is better. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try this webcam as well. There we go. All right. Are you on a plane? Ah, <laughs> uh, that's, that's funny. You've got the jokes. <laughs> All right, so we'll try. We'll do DLSS. We want high preset.
ray tracing on high, DLSS. So this is basically DLSS on quality. Full screen, high, everything is on set to maximum except for DLSS on quality. I don't believe there's frame generation in this game. So let's go ahead and continue. Let me know if there's any delay, by the way. Snap, snap. So just so you know. Okay, all right, so here we are, we're in control. I'm gonna go ahead and just run through some areas here. Such a funky, fresh game. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reset it here. All right, so we're gonna record whatever FPS we get from this moment on. I'm just gonna run, so this, this is toward the beginning of the map, I believe. We're gonna run from these doors outward. All right, so I'm gonna start my run right here. Okay. So we'll run back all the way to that other room. Our 1% lows are not great. All right, and we'll stop right here. 12542 12542 All right. Beautiful. Next up is Elden Ring. We're going to see if we can get max settings on Maximum frame rate, which is 60, on maximum settings. I think we will be able to pretty easily, but let's make sure we'll verify. Uh, Gizmo, does the SCAR 18 have Ethernet? Pictures say yes, but technical... Uh, yeah, the SCAR 18 has a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet on the left side. What does 1% low actually mean? It means um, the worst 1% FPS averaged, essentially. All right, so to verify our settings, we need to up our frame, our resolution, 2560. And everything is set to high. Oh, okay, we can do maximum. How do I, okay. Uh, can, yes, we want to keep current settings. All right. We want maximum settings, 2560 by 1600. Um, awesome. That display looks incredible. Is it the same as the Strix? Scar 18, this is the Scar 18. Um, and yeah, it's an incredible display. It, it, it plays really great. I definitely would recommend it. Okay, so... Uh, we're gonna pillage some remains. We'll go out, run out here. Notice how, <laughs> look, at, look at how we're barely <laughs> using the GPU in this game. This game is so dang easy. It is so dang easy to run. <laughs> Our combined workload at maximum settings is 110 watts. The drops are lower. I wish that's one of the reasons why I wish we could go to like high FPS. So our 1% lows would be better, but the G18 does have the same display, correct, Clark? All right. We should be able to die to this guy real easy. How do you dodge again? Is it space? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Ha! This thing is crazy. I think I died. Did I die? 
I think I died. <laughs> twenty five hundred for this machine is a bargain. He, uh, this isn't twenty five hundred. This is thirty eight ninety nine. Uh, yeah, the regular Strix G18 also has this display. Okay, I'd like to skip this cutscene if I can. Any noticeable blooming on the mini LED screen, uh, screens? Um, not that I have noticed, Todoroki. Nothing obvious to me. Maybe someone more sensitive would be able to test that. I don't know. Um, by blooming, I believe you mean like a white object has like extra white glow around the sides of it. And I have not noticed anything like that. I don't need to do the cave of knowledge. The G18's being sold for double the retail value almost? That is crazy. Okay, so we're gonna go up. I just want to get a save out here in the open world area because it's uh, a bit more demanding, I think, graphically out in the open world. So I just want to—I want to have that be the test area. So. We're Okay, so we're gonna have bad audio again here, guys. Sorry, hold on. Okay. Uh-oh. Let's see what damage we can do to this guy, and that'll be our Elden Ring test. Fighting this guy. Okay, you got me. Um, so yeah. Rock solid, can run Elden Ring perfectly. No problem at all. There you go. All right. So let me just make sure it's gonna be saved. And then we can exit. That should save our game, I think. And there we go. Elden Ring is a really fun game if you like difficult and challenging games. Okay, so uh, I guess for Elden Ring, the result is 60. Apex Legends is next. All right, let's go. I haven't got to see the blade one, but um, Matthias, they should be basically identical panels or very, very similar. But I do say I, uh, I got to see the GT77 display, got, uh, came in the mail, and that display is my favorite out of all the big laptop displays so far. Um, of course, the Predator 18 display is also excellent, but it's not available for sale. So, all right, so to start with, we are in a max settings. V-Sync disabled, the reflex on. 
full screen. Let's hop into uh, training. Sorry, firing range. Athra says, watching live from India. It's 4 a.m. here. Welcome, welcome to the live stream, my friend. Which display do you like more? The scar? Yeah, sorry, I was rereading it. Uh, Country says, resizable bar utilizes advanced features of PCI Express to increase performance. How it worked this technology with 4000 series GPUs? I believe it works the same as the 3000 series, but um, I wouldn't call myself an expert on resizable bar. So. Oh, hmm, interesting. So, I'm curious. Oh, I gotta, I gotta change some settings here. Hold on. This has got to be one. <laughs> it's way too sensitive. Okay. Uh, and this is a game where you could definitely set. So this is everything on high. Everything's on high right now, and you could definitely play this game on high settings. But I think the way I, I play this game, you know, being a competitive player, I would play it on everything on low except uh, textures. So that's the way we're gonna do the test. But this is what everything on, on max settings. So um, let's just go ahead and do the test on low settings. And uh, actually, we're going to do an anti-aliasing enabled, everything else on low. Apply. All right. So, oh, did we not? We're maxing the 240 FPS, so we're going to do a back. We got we to gotta change our FPS cap because we're hitting, bumping into the 240 FPS max, which... <laughs> I mean, I mean, if you think about it, this display is only goes to 240 FPS anyway, so it doesn't really matter that much. Um, games require thousands of hours of your time to get into, so you can only juggle one or two of them at a time. I don't know about that, but. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean, though. It does take a long time to really get into a game and master it. And some people take longer to uh, acclimate to games. Uh, Wolf Knight's been so torn on finalizing my laptop purchase generation. Which, which laptop are you trying to pick between? And yeah, me too. I've been struggling to figure out which laptop I'm going to get. So this is the settings we're going to test all the time going forward in Apex Legends. Everything on, on low except for textures and anti-aliasing will be up, okay? So this is going to be our defaults. This is how I play the game. This is how I would recommend players to play the game if you want to have uh, max frame rates. And the best looking game. JA says GeForce 3060, 32 gigs DDR RAM 5, and Ryzen 5 7600. Good. I don't know what those specs are. Those don't make any sense. A 3060 is good though. Alright, so here we go. On low, let's do the test. I can't quite move my mouse far enough. <laughs> wow, we're just hitting our 300 FPS cap nonstop right now with this laptop. That is awesome. So you can't compare this result with what the uh, SCAR and Alienware M16 was. You can compare the first result though, because those were the max settings.
Beautiful. Okay. Um, excellent. Incredible result. Just nonstop. Nonstop 300 FPS in this firing range. That's great. Uh, all right. So test say 4080 and 4090 are close. Also considered Razor Blade 16 while looking over the others. I would say if you're debating between a 4080 and 4090, you're going to want to wait until I get, uh, until you can see tests with the high end 4090. So we get a better idea of performance. So like the high end 4090s in like the MSI GT77, XMG Neo with the liquid cooler, Alienware M18, um, some of those might have noticeable gains in FPS over what we're seeing in um, something like the SCAR 18. And it's hard to know how much those gains are gonna be and uh, how, how worth it it's gonna be for those. So. so if you're unsure, just buy from a uh, buy from a company you can return the laptop too easily, or if you don't want to have to deal with buying and returning, then just be patient to see the full benchmarks. Jay Moran says there's this Omen laptop, 3070 Ti, i7-12700H. Gotcha. It all depends on pricing. For a 3070 Ti, I would say you want to get pricing under $1,500 probably. Uh, and then it's a decent deal. But we, need, we really need to see what the performance is going to be like on the 40, 50, 40, 60, 40, 70, and how much they're going to be before we know for sure. Which do you prefer, a crisp display or a bigger screen size? I prefer a bigger screen size if possible, but um, depends. Let's see here. So uh, where have we been landing? I think in status, stasis array. Over here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start our averages. Um, we are GPU bound right now. I wanna point that out. We're at 98% GPU utilization, 97. So that's interesting. We got some people landing over here. We might die to these people, probably will die to these people. Quickly, oh crap, we got people landing. Oh, I'm not, okay, so I'm gonna die quick here because I don't have a gun. He doesn't have a gun either. <laughs> None of us have guns. Uh, uh, uh. How lulzy is that? We're just running around. <laughs> wow, our FPS is 280 though. That's amazing. Oh, we got a gun now, let's go. I did not change any of my settings though. I'm just gonna, all right, we'll just go die. It's whatever. We're just here to test the GPU performance and it, it's been crazy good performance. I'm really impressed with the Apex Legends performance on this laptop. So I need to test the, the Strix G18 and uh, M16 with these exact settings and see what they get. All right, we're gonna call some people over to me. Let's see what's in, let's see what's in this. Oh yeah, let's get a two by four X. That'll help me. I would've killed that guy if I had the two to four X. Nice. Wow, 287, 148, incredible. Incredible performance. Um, let's put that in. 287, 148. All right. So that'll be, oh, I just changed the fan, the mode here. So we gotta go back to manual fans.
I fat fingered the performance button. Let me see if I can get the. Uh, let me see if I can get. Let's go ahead and load Flight Simulator, but I'm gonna see if I can cam my uh, my mic and camera back. Okay, so, is there an audio delay? Let me know. Uh, hopefully we don't have to turn this off again for a while. Should have had a nice time to cool now. This display is huge. Yeah, it's an enormous display. 18 inch displays are huge. 17 inch are still pretty good. Um, am I gonna compare with the SCAR 18 versus the G18? Yes, we're gonna do side by sides with the SCAR-18 and G-18, so. Is it better to buy a laptop with a 4070 Ti? That's not a thing yet, there's no 4070 Ti. Um, or a whole pre-built PC with a 3060? Uh, if they're the same price points? Oh, the laptop 4070, sh I would rather get that, personally, because more portable and everything. Okay, so uh, QHD, DLSS on quality. Wow, there's frame generation in this game. I didn't realize there's frame generation. We're definitely gonna be using frame generation. Um, and we want everything set to ultra. We don't want any AMD FX sharpening. We're gonna set everything to ultra. All right, and uh, let's go back. I believe it's world map. We depart from PDX. This is the way I bench this. Uh, I believe we set it to 1 p.m. So it's in the middle of the afternoon. And uh, flight conditions are just gonna be uh, clear or whatever, so. Not very realistic, because in Portland it's always cloudy, but uh, just for the sake of the benchmark. Okay, a lot of people have been wanting flight simulator performance testing. Here you go, all right? Here you go, finally. There's no difference between 16 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of RAM, right? Um, for most games, there's going to be no difference, but some games do like having more than 16 gigs of RAM. Um, depends on the game, but like 90, 95% of them still are good with 16 gigs. All right. So here we are. All right. Wow. Holy crap. 120 frames per second in Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you are a VR enthusiast and you want to play Microsoft Flight Simulator, I think having an RTX 4000 series is gonna be a must have because the frame rate is so much higher than we've ever seen before. Um, frame generation and DLSS and quality is so much higher. It's unbelievable, like that's crazy. Um, I'm trying to remember the control options here. Here, uh, so I want to search by name, throttle. And we want, uh, I want keyboard and I want throttle. Okay, so uh, F1 cuts throttle. F3 increases throttle, so we need to hold F3. And then we need the parking brake. 
parking brake toggle parking brake is P. Okay. All right. So uh, we're gonna hold F three. All right, and then we're gonna press P to release parking brake. And then we just let it go. And that's our, this is our benchmark. Now that we're moving, we set the benchmark to test it. And wherever it goes, it goes, but it should go up in the air automatically as we get some speed. And we let it run until this starts tilting downward. All right, and there you go. Starting to go down. So we got 110.67, holy crap. I have to look up what we got in the past with RTX 3080s, but that is an enormous gain. I think it's more than double anything we've ever seen before um, or somewhere in that range. Cause this game is um, oddly CPU bound and frame generation basically lets us bypass that CPU bottleneck to generate crazy better frames. So, Wow. Witcher 3. Let's go. I had to install a bunch of software for work today, and this stream made it a lot less agonizing. Thanks for doing this. No problem. Dawood, I hope, you, I hope you're enjoying it. Um, Clark says, although building a desktop gaming PC costs just as much as a laptop these days because of the higher GPU prices, uh, the GPU prices have come down on desktops. Um, it was really bad for a while there. It was almost better to buy a gaming laptop for a while there. Um, but um, it all, it really depends on what you're buying. Because if you buy a budget laptop for $600, like the Acer Nitro or Lenovo IdeaPad 3 or something, you're probably not going to be able to make a desktop for $600, have a monitor, keyboard, mouse. It's just You're just not going to be able to beat that value uh, in the desktop category space. But for $1,000, $1,200, that's where it gets really competitive between desktops and laptops. And uh, desktops probably usually winning most of those times. And then as you get to like $3,000, desktops really win a lot. Um, and $5,000, the desktops usually win as well, almost always. So, um, so it really depends on what price category you're talking about when it comes to PC versus gaming laptop deals. Max frame rate. We want unlimited. We're gonna do, we're gonna start off with uh, DLSS on. Set to full screen. Don't be like that. There we go, full screen, QHD, DLSS enabled. Going to graphics now, we want ray tracing on. We want ray tracing on ultra, Archie ultra settings. For anti-aliasing, we're doing um, DLSS and we're doing quality. I don't know why the menu keeps messing up, but. So those are our settings. RT ultra DLSS quality. Uh, does this have frame generation? I don't think it does. Does it? I can't remember. I don't think so. But it does have our, uh, does have ray tracing and it does have DLSS now. So very cool that they went back and updated Witcher 3. Another fantastic game. I haven't beat this all the way through yet, but I really want to. Um, yeah, Witcher 3 is a uh, just a really great game if you like adventure RPG type games. All right. Add display setting, frame generation, you saw it? I thought, maybe I'm wrong. I thought, I thought this had it, but. Oh, frame generation. 
DLSS frame generation. Right. Okay. Yes. There is, of course. I don't know why. I thought. I guess I thought this had it. Okay. I was was misreading it. DLSS frame generation is on. Okay. So we have DLSS on quality, frame generation on, twenty five sixty, uh, sixteen hundred p, ray tracing on ultra. Let's see what we get. So as always, we just run over here to the front area. Yeah. I, yeah. Sorry, guys. I was brain fart. All right. Okay. Here we go. And we're running. So 95 FPS. We're diving, we're climbing, we're swimming. Beautiful. Yeah, I had it enabled. Yep. Sweet. So uh, I'm going to try to compare this versus what we got in the Strix G18 here. I'm really curious what we got. Shabam, so 106.37. Let me put that into the here, and then I'll check the Strix G18's performance because we see what it does versus the 4080. All right, and we got uh, 106.37. All right, and um, all right, so let's go ahead and do a check. Boom, and we're gonna go here. And uh, we should have Witcher 3 frame generation enabled. And then off the bridge. <laughs> okay. So, looking at this performance, it looks like um, the Strix G18 got 93 FPS, the Alienware M16 got 98, and we got 106. So it would be like 93 one versus 106 if you were to compare the G18 versus the SCAR 18. So that is a uh, seven, 23 FPS gain for the 93 base. Let's calculate the percentage. So that's 24.7% faster with the RTX 4090. Pretty interesting. That's more than I was expecting. Um, all right, so let's just try, we'll do one with no ray tracing, no DLSS, but we'll do TAA. FXA, TAA, we'll do TAA. And display, we're gonna turn off frame generation. Not that I would ever play this game like that, but Let's see what we get for FPS. Should be noticeably way worse, FPS. <laughs> the controls in this are sometimes funky getting in and out of the water. What's this consensus here? M16 better than G18? I would say the M16 is only going to be better than the G18 if you're okay with messing with the software 
going through the software problems with Alienware Command Center. Um, but if you are, then yeah, I would probably pick up a, an M16 over a G18 probably, or I don't know. They're very competitive. G18 has better display, bigger display. It really kind of depends on what you want, you know. M16 better ports. There's a lot of, a lot of advantages back and back and forth. Okay, so uh, here we go. The raw game mount now. No DLSS. No ray tracing. No frame generation. Let's see what we get. A QHD 16 by 10. Looks like it's going to be about mid 80s here. All right, so we got 8837. I'm not even going to record that on the, the benchmark live stream, but um, still, pretty interesting to see. Excellent performance in Witcher 3. All right, uh, next up, Rainbow Six Siege. Let's see if that is going to work. For some reason, it, this was crashing on me in... Uh, on the Strix G18, maybe it was a driver issue or something. I don't know. Maybe it's fixed now. That's my hope. All right. Come on, Rainbow Six Siege, let's go. Is there any mention of what the Alienware 4090 should be looking at for cost? Um, I was looking at, uh, I think, I think someone found a, someone found a price and they put it on my sheet. One of my guys, I don't know. Um, I think. Let me see. Yeah. So if I. Right here, thirty six ninety nine for the forty ninety variant with AMD. I don't know what screen display or whatever it is, but um, I don't think it's for sale yet. No, it's not for sale yet. But if you want to know when it goes on sale, be checking my list uh, regularly, and you'll find out. Because we're we'll be looking for it every day. Oh, and I see her. I was showing the wrong one. This is the screen I was meant to show you. Uh, so the M, the Alienware M18, thirty six ninety nine for the M18 with a Ryzen nine seventy nine forty five HX and a RTX forty ninety. I don't know where they got this value, but one of my guys found it. So. All right, so let's go back over to here. Uh, we're getting some weird stuttering going on. I'm guessing it's a driver issue. Maybe with Vulcan. Not sure. Might have to try non-Vulcan mode. Looks like we crashed. Let's try the non-Vulcan mode. Wait. This is super weird. All right, so we've got uh, six games left. Rainbow Six Siege, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Far Cry 5. Uh, we already had Control. Right? I know we already did Control. But I don't... What did we get in Control? We got 124, 125, 42. Okay. 
Let me put that on here. 125.42. All right, and um, whoop. Bump on the camera. I also gotta move that up on the list to be higher. Oh, I already put it in. Yeah, it's beautiful. All right, so we've got uh, four games left, five games. Wow. Rainbow Six Siege is so buggy. It's, I'm gonna try switching it to Vulcan and see if it makes it better. Or switching out of Vulcan, see if it makes it better. I'm guessing if you have an AMD graphics card, you'll want to run it in Vulcan, though. I don't remember this many problems running it in the past, so. Getting so impatient, waiting for the 4090 Alienware to drop. Tempted to just say, forget it and get the 4080 version of the M16. Yeah, I know what you mean. Chat, feel free to ask any questions you have while we're waiting for this benchmark to go. This is uh this has been a long live stream. How far are we in right now? Three hours and fifteen minutes. Whew. Oh, we still have graphical bugs even with non Vulcan. Interesting. What laptop has HDR? So plenty of the laptops this year have HDR. Uh, basically, I'm not sure about all of them, but I know basically all the mini LED ones will support HDR. Um, man, Rainbow Six Siege is still so buggy. High dynamic resolution. Um, doesn't HDR have to do with high dynamic range being the color and yeah, the GT77 supports HDR with the mini LED 4K. What's up, Gahan Bastion? Uh, when is the Scar 16 unboxing happening? Um, good question. I don't know. It's been delayed. My order was delayed and it's uh, back ordered, they're saying. So I don't know when I'm getting it. But as soon as I get it, it's happening. Yeah, it's high dynamic range for HDR. Um, and high dynamic range basically means high levels of contrast in between brightness and darkness. I don't know what the heck these artifacts are, Dennis. This is funky right now. And it looks like... Rainbow Six Siege is just, it's a buggy mess right now. So I guess we're not gonna be benchmarking Rainbow Six Siege until they get the drivers and game optimization for the new 4000 series. It's too bad. Where can I pre-order the Asus 16? You're gonna have to be more specific. There's a lot of Asus laptops that have 16s in their names. Um, okay, so we're skipping Rainbow Six Siege, we're going to Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Let's do it! Yahoo! ROG Strix. Again, you have to be a little more specific. SCAR 16 or G16? Uh, Britt Allen, I'm pretty sure it's not, rebooting's not gonna help anything. I don't wanna waste any more time on it. So, and where can you pre-order the Strix G16? Um, you can find links to being able to pre-order whichever one it is over on the laptop list. So there's a laptop list. You can see it right here. There are links right here. So if you, let's say you wanna to go to the SCAR 16, you can click the expandy button next to it. Or if you're on mobile, just tap on the laptop name. It's currently out of stock, but you can see there's links on Newegg and BH Photo. 
Um, and there's going to be more and more links added on where you can buy each of these laptops. The Strix G16 or the 4070 right now can be pre-ordered on Best Buy's. Uh, there's a link right here for that. So there's, I think there might be more than one option for pre-ordering the Strix G16. I, I'm not sure. So you want to check the list and follow the list if you want to keep up, up to date with all the latest, um, all of the latest performance uh, performance numbers as well as links to where you can buy and everything. So uh, VSync. So we're setting up our Tomb Raider settings right now. We're going to be doing. Um, so our standard for this is going to be. Again, DLSS on quality. We're going to do highest graphics settings. And we're going to do ray tracing on ultra. This is how I would play the game if I had this laptop. So I don't believe there's any frame generation on this game. So it's just going to be ray tracing and ultra settings. So let's see what we get. Uh, what is the type of keyboard? Is it optical mechanical? No, it's not. The new SCAR ones do not have optical mechanical. Um, I don't know about the SCAR 17, 20, uh, oh yeah, 2021 SCAR 17 had the optical mechanical keyboard and I really liked mine on the SCAR 15 I had. Um, I actually still have that. I need to sell that. So Mitchell Hill, I haven't managed to catch one of these live yet. Super excited. Cool. Well, you're just, you're catching the tail end. We got, I think four games left now. So lots and lots of benchmarks in this live stream. A crazy amount of them. You can see the results up on the left. Whew, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Is it also bugged? Thanks, Gan. Uh, Ganha, welcome. Or glad you can make the live stream. You have a nice night as well. It is like 4 a.m. your time, right? Super weird. I hit Alt-Tab and then the game started loading. It wasn't loading until I Alt-Tabbed. Okay, so QHD, DLSS on quality, highest graphics settings with ray, ray tracing enabled. Let's see what we get. Steve Onashi, what's up, Steve? You guys notice this year's AMD Strix still carry last year's design? Correct. Um, ports still in the back? I didn't think that it had the ports in the back. I thought it was based on the Zephyrus S17 design. Let me check. Um... Yeah, it does have last year's design. Interesting. Yep. Well, I mean, it was still a good laptop, but obviously that might hurt performance, though, comparatively speaking. Mitchell Hill says, are you going to get the Blade 16 4090? Interested in the new mini LED display. So I have seen the, the Blade 14 4090 in person and it's great. Um, I personally probably would recommend actually just going for the QHD 240 hertz display. Probably, uh, unless you really want 4K. But I'm more, I'm more of a QHD 240 hertz, I guess, favorite. But I mean, I'm... Yeah, I might end up actually going with the 4K 144 hertz on the GT77. We'll see. Um, I really loved the keyboard and trackpad on the GT77. It has been, uh, my using it has been, I bumped it to a 100 because I really loved the keyboard on the GT77. Um, on the ratings list, that's why the GT77 is now back on top as the number one laptop on the ratings chart. So, um, yeah. I'm planning to upgrade my old laptop. Which brand is the best? There's a lot of great brands, and a lot of them have great laptops. I don't think there's any one best brand, but there's probably one best laptop for you. So it depends on what your needs are, the pros and cons surrounding all of them. So am I going to test an Alienware X16 4090? Uh, I might end up getting to test that this year, Gina. Uh, I'm going to have to see. 
It's going to be a real uh, challenge because I've already got a lot of laptops stacking up. Um, but uh, I would like to test the Alienware X16 if I can. All right, so uh, Matthias asks, when you consider 4080 models, do you see the reason for the big price difference between a SCAR 18 and Strix G18? I think the price difference is a little bit steep between those two, if I'm being honest. I think, um, especially considering they have the same display, I think the Strix G18 is just a lot better value if you're on a budget, so yeah. A lot of, a lot of uh, other laptop a lot of other laptops don't have as big of a price difference between a 4080 and a 4090. Most of them are more like between $400 and $600, maybe $800 to upgrade, not $1,400. That seems too high. Um, so which laptop should I get and why this laptop doesn't have many LED? So the thing is the QHD 240Hz display on the Blade 16 is still amazing. It's so good. So... All right, our average FPS with ray tracing on ultra, DLSS on quality, QHD 16 by 10, 151. Bingo. So that's fantastic performance. Um, and if we turned off ray tracing, turned off DLSS, I'm sure we'd be pushing over 200. Thanks, same thoughts on my side, yeah. All right, no problem. Uh, move on to the next test. Oh, uh, we got one, it was 151. Let me put that on the sheet. Do you guys like having all of these benchmarks on the left or is it better for me just to let people jump around the video to find them? Um, I think I probably, the videos probably perform better if I just let people jump around, <laughs> but maybe it's more useful having the numbers on the left. I want it to be as helpful as possible. So I don't know. It's hard for me to decide what to do on that. All right, so Far Cry 5, Valorant, and League of Legends. Three more games. Let's go. Yee. For you, it's better. For you, it's better they search for us with it on the screen. Is there a difference between 4070, 4080, and 4090? Yeah, there's going to be a big performance jump between all three of those, especially before the, between the 4070 and 4080. Um, between the 4080 and 4090, I'm seeing variance in performance gains between like 12% to 20, low 20%. So it depends on the game. I need to do a, a big average uh, after a bunch of a bunch of these tests if we want to get a more accurate estimate. But um, yeah, that's what we're seeing so far. Okay, so I think we already. We already set this up. A resolution scaling should be at uh, this should be at one. And everything else should be at ultra, yeah. Full screen native two forty hertz QHD. That should be good. Let's test the benchmark. Um, again, big shout out to Lance. Lance stopping into the live stream. Uh, this is his SCAR 18. He's letting me benchmark it. And I'm, I'm benchmarking the crap out of it, Lance. We're getting a ton of benchmarks on this thing. Because I, really, I know I only have it for uh, till tomorrow. So it's going to be... <laughs> I'm just trying, to, I'm trying to, to cram as many benchmarks as I can. Um, so again, big shout out and thank you to Lance. Uh, Mitchell says, how loud would you say the SCAR is right now? Uh, I'm guessing around 55 to 56 decibels for the fan noise. That's my estimate. You can, that's on max fans though. You can definitely play this um, at more like 52 to 53 decibels will still get you close to the maximum performance. I don't know why this FPS was so high there. The average was so high. Um, this is the average to look at right here for Far Cry 5. I'm tempted to redo it because that messed it up. So we're at one, 153, but let's run it one more time.
Brit Allen says, I like the list. Okay. If Brit Allen likes it, then it's worth keeping. Peter says, generally, I feel like Alienware carries the stigma of being overpriced, but it seems like the M16 is competitive for the performance it offers. Do you think the stigma breaks with the M16? Um, yeah, I think, Peter, um, the, st the stigma has been pretty bad for Alienware, but their prices this year are much more reasonable and very competitive with the rest of the market. And um, yeah, I think the M16, at least at the $25.99 price point that it was at when I bought it is great. I thought someone said that the price on it went up $200 or something. I don't know. Gentech got 56 decibels. I'm not sure what Gentech got on it, Britt. Okay, so we got 150 with 106. Okay, on to Valorant and League of Legends. So we have to do a computer restart to be able to get Vanguard back running again for Valorant and League of Legends. That's why I did it last. I don't have a Valor or a League of Legends account that might take a minute to get set up. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, Ala asks, uh, do you know when this laptop will be in stock and in stores? So I just, <laughs> that's so funny. Your question was the exact question. I was just responding to someone. Um, yeah, the, we don't know when it's going to be back in stock. It's impossible to say. Because, uh, you know, it's just a matter of brands producing them high demand for it. Um, you know, you can't really expect it to come in stock anytime soon. I would, well, I would, we'll put it this way. It's not going to be readily available for a while. It's going to be basically instantly selling out, I think, for a while. That's my take on it right now. Um, yeah. Does that make sense? That's my take. Um, if you want, if you want to make sure you don't miss out on the Scar 18 when it does go for sale, again, follow my list because we're going to be sending out daily email updates on what laptops are in stock. And um, if you really want to maximize your chance of getting it in stock, you might also want to sign up for notifications on Newegg. Um, all I ask is if you or whatever website it is, if they have notifications, sometimes you can hit notify me and it'll email you. But uh, if you do utilize that uh, before you actually buy it, I still ask if you can go to the sheet and click through the link before you add it to cart and buy it. Um, otherwise, uh, it doesn't support me as a content creator. If you just uh, get a notification two weeks later or whatever and click through it and buy it that way. But uh, if you want notifications another way um, and to not be notified if it comes into stock at any other websites like BH Photo, Adorama, Amazon, or whatever, um, then you're definitely going to want to follow the list. Um, and the list I'm talking about is this one right here. There's a follow button on the top left over here, this follow button. Uh, 27 followers right now. These people will basically get daily emails of what laptops have come in and out of stock. Any major changes I've made to the list or uh, whatever. Um, speaking of which, I believe I need to do an update right now. So uh, let me actually do that. Yeah, so here it is. So let's go ahead and do an update. So notice that there's all the, the full list of the laptop names here. We're working on formatting. We're going to improve the formatting of this. Um, but right now, this is what we got. So uh, we're going to send this out, notify 27 followers. Those people just got notifications for 
Uh, all of the laptops have been coming in and out of stock and you can see these laptops right here on what the status is for those laptops. So um, let me go ahead and get logged in while we're It's, we're almost done installing uh, Valorant. So uh, while it's installing, it's just, it's like, it's, it's only take a minute or two. Let's talk about the top four or five laptops that are competing with the SCAR 18, okay? Um, so if you're watching this stream, I'm assuming you're probably interested in potentially getting a SCAR 18. Um, the SCAR 18 is a ultra high competitive laptop with great CPU, top of the end of the CPU, which I love that. Uh, great GPU and high levels of TDP, but it's not the very highest levels of TDP. So when I'm comparing this laptop, what I'm first gonna do is we're going to uh, go down here to display size and we're gonna make this sucker um, basically only the biggest laptops. I wish this display, oh, that's display quality. I want display size, where's that one? So display size, here it is. Okay, so uh, we want 17, let's just do 18 inch onlys. So these are all the 18 inch laptops that you can possibly buy, but I guess let's do 17.3 inch, okay? So wait, that was 73, so let's do 17, there we go, okay. So, wow, there's a lot of laptops there. Um, we're also going to do, hmm, there's other ways to, to do this. Let's do uh, 4090. Okay, so these are all the big screen laptops now that have uh, a RTX 4090 in the, in the option column. And um, so we've got the GT77 Alienware M18 GE78, Aura 17X, Razer Blade 18, SCAR 17, SCAR 18, which is what we're talking about here, the Aura 17, XMG Neo 17. Let's just go through them really quick. The GT77, super powerful, very expensive laptop. This one may be the one I'm gonna end up with this year. I'm actually debating about keeping it because I love the keyboard and touchpad. And then we're M18, the 4090 version is not out yet, but it should be a great laptop, I think. The um, GE78 is a more portable laptop than most of these other big ones because uh, it's got a 16 by 10 and it's a bit more condensed down. It's more of a competitor with the Aura 17X and Razer Blade 18. Both of those are also very more, more portable 4090s. Um, and the Aura 17X is also a little more reasonably priced uh, while still providing good performance and, and uh, overall portability. The Blade 18 is a more premium laptop I, I like the Blade 18. I haven't got mine in yet. I may end up keeping the Blade 18. Uh, and uh, I also ordered a SCAR eight, uh, 17. So I'm re I may end up keeping the SCAR 17, even though it's an older design. It's got the new Dragon Range AMD CPU in it, which could, should provide better battery life. And the SCAR 17 is also a bit smaller than the SCAR 18 in terms of overall footprint. So uh, XMG Neo 17 is another 17 inch laptop. And uh, it's got a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, a bit thicker, but it also has a water cooler. So if you want something quiet, that's also awesome. This is a great option. Um, and there's an electronics uh, variant of this that's similar. That's the Mech 17. That's for US customers. You have the Cell 17. I wouldn't really recommend this laptop to anyone at this point. It's overpriced and low performance. The Omen 17, I don't know enough about it yet. It could be good. I'm gonna order one of these and do an unboxing and benchmarking of it. Um, but this one could be a great bang for the buck as well and high value. So um, Acer Nitro 17 also could be good. This one also is a potential contender for uh, high-end, moderately priced laptops. I don't know, 3,700 for a 4090 variant. It's a bit high on the pricing, I don't know. So there you go. That's the kind of the overview of all the potential competitors to the SCAR 18. And I think there's a lot of good ones out there. Uh, the top three, I would say, are the MSI GT77 is my number one right now. Uh, SCAR, SCAR 18 and probably Blade 18 are my top three. The GE78 maybe is number four. But then Aura 17X. Then maybe XMG Neo 17. And a Neo 17 might 
jump up a little bit on the list. I don't know. Hard to say. The Neo 17 is really more of a specialized use case if you really want a liquid cooling laptop. Okay. Brett says, thank you for email. <laughs> okay, good. No problem. All right. Uh, so here we are, Valorant. Full screen, 16 by 10. We're going to do ultra settings. We want um, no limit, no limit, and no limit. Off. We want this to be like 500. Graphics qualities will set everything to ultra, no V-Sync. I think everything's going to be set good already. All right. We need Afterburner. I just realized Afterburner's not running. I don't know if Afterburner is even going to run for us. Um, should I buy the GE78HX? Totally up to you. It looks really good. In some ways, it's better than the GT77. In some ways, it's not as good as the GT77. Clearly, the cooling is going to be better in the GT77 for if you want the maximum possible performance. Um, but the GE78HX is basically a more portable version. So... With a better webcam, too, supposedly, so... Uh, online says, I'm back. How do you, did you do League of Legends? No, we're doing um, Valorant and then League of Legends. And I've never loaded, oh, I've basically never played League of Legends. So it's going to be interesting. Okay, so we got our stats now for Valorant. That's good. Um... Nice. Okay. Just to verify our settings are still the same. Everything's looking good here. Graphics quality. Yep. Okay. So let's go ahead and play. We're going to try to do a quick match. Let's do a death match. Let's see if we can do a death match. Don't get addicted to League for your own mental sake. Dude, I was addicted to Dota 2. I have like 3,000 hours in Dota 2. Um, yeah, it was my game for like three years. I just, just played Dota 2. So I've had my fill of MOBAs. <laughs> League is, uh, I'd, I'd played League a little bit, but since I was so addicted to Dota 2, I couldn't adjust to it. Um, how do I pick my gun that I want? Yeah, let's do uh, I'm a Guardian player. Someone spawned behind us. Turn the sound up. Ooh. Okay, so looking at our FPS, we're doing 427, we're averaging over 400 so far. <laughs> Pretty crazy FPS. <sighs> These guys are good. Got one. We'll get a headshot spree going here. There we go. Oh, someone shot us from behind. Mobas are some of my favorite genres. Shame they're so toxic. Oh, dude, it is. That is the reason why I stopped playing. Not because I didn't enjoy it. It's because I couldn't. I couldn't handle the level of toxicity. Whoa, my mouse freaked out there. Oh, I think I touched the touchpad a little bit. Oh, I instantly died. Wow, our average FPS is over. It's 420 right now. It's 420, y'all. Woo! <laughs> uh. So someone's gonna shoot me from behind. I know it. All right, waiting, waiting. Got him. All right, now we're gonna check over here. Oh. 
FPS. You could you literally can use a uh, 1080p 4 400 hertz screen, 480 hertz screen with this game and still see the more FPS. That's awesome. So for esports players um, that play Valorant full time, that Alienware M18 or M16 with a 480 hertz screen is that's legit. So yeah, notice our our GPU utilization is only 60%, so we are CPU bound right now. Oh, it got us. Um, oh, don't do it. All right, let's switch to a uh, Vandal. Oh, oh. Yeah, this game is a clone of Counter-Strike, if you guys aren't familiar with it. It's an instant die, quick, fast-paced shooter type of game. And wow, it is... Uh, the FPS in this is absolutely insane. It's just, like, it's just like CSGO, pretty much, on the FPS side of things. So I think that's a good enough demonstration of the FPS in this. Let's go ahead and hop over to League. So, uh, League of Legends, if you're not familiar, is a strategy game, a MOBA, which is a multi multiplayer battle arena. Multiplayer online battle arena game is what MOBA stands for. And uh, League of Legends is the most popular MOBA that there is out there. I'm not sure... Um, I'm not sure how many players have played it now, but I know it was over 100 million at one point. So, pretty interesting. Dota 2 never quite got as many players as League, but I think Dota 2 was the better game. So, Valorant, what, what was the FPS that we were averaging near the end there? So it looks like 470, 477 when we quit. Absolutely insane bon bonkers performance. All right, time for some League of Legends. So if you guys have any questions, shoot them my way before this ends. Uh, compete to win. Respect my teammates. Protect myself and my community. Be my own last line of defense. Oh, yeah. Um... Cool, how do I, what? What am I supposed to do? Oh, it's installing. I had already downloaded this and installed it, but I guess not. Wow, we are doing 71 megabits a second right now. 74 megabits a second. That's the fastest download speed I've seen so far. Um, that'll download fast, okay. Dennis, did you see any stutter on the Valorant or was it smooth as butter? It was smooth as butter. Um, I think our 1% low was like over, uh, let's see, checking. Our 1% low was 230 FPS. So the lowest 1% of the FPS was 230. So no, basically no dips. It was smooth, smooth as silk. Um, Antonio Jackson, so what's the best bang for the buck in, in as of right now with all the new laptops? Uh, for RTX 4080 and above laptops, probably the Strix G18 right now. Um, 
And for the RTX 4070, 4060, 4050, I'm guessing the MSI Pulse 15 is one of the most promising RTX 4070 laptops. I think the 4070 starts at 1449, but it's not out yet. Um, Pre-orders on that are gonna start really soon. Um, let's take it, well, well, League is downloading. Let's just pop over to the list and we'll do a, a search. All right, so we're gonna clear our filters. And let's say you wanted to look for an RTX 4070 laptop. You just click RTX 4070 in the model number. Boom, it's gonna show you all the laptops that have an RTX 4070. And then we can filter by price to give us the cheapest 4070. So you can see the Pulse 15 starts at 1499. The Nitro 6 starts at 1499. MSI Katana with a 4070 starts at 1499. Um, Stealth 14 with a 4070 starts at 1599. So those are your cheapest 4070 laptops and probably it's gonna be some of the best bang for the buck mid-range laptops for the new 4000 series. But if you want to jump to a 4080, right now the Strix G18 is the best option. As far as I know, there might be some other options out there. But um, based on the things that I know so far, it's my number one recommendation in the $2,500 price tag. All right. So... Okay, here we are. We are in League, I believe. Can we get it to be full screen? Window size. What? There is no... Is there... What? <laughs> What? Okay. What is happening right now? Where is the video settings at? What is going on? Is this just the pre-window? Um... <laughs> no way. All you league players in chat, what the heck is happening? How do you go full game when full screen when game starts? Real game won't be okay, but I can't even click. I can't even click the progression button down below. <laughs> Maybe I can hit enter. Spacebar? No, nothing. Um, 1080p? No, it just scales incorrectly. Let's try to restart the game. I might need to change um, Windows scaling on this app launch to fix this. I had it, it was okay when it first opened up, but when I changed the resolution, it cut off the bottom third of the, of the, the thing, so. Okay, now it's too big. But let's just hit, can we hit play? Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, League, you're convincing me. Uh, let's go scaling. I think I think what'll fix this is if I just go uh, to here. Well, I bet you there's a desktop icon. So if I just go view, show desktop icons, and then I go to League of Legends. It's not responding okay I go to properties general advanced compatibility um, change DPI settings override DPI settings override high DPI scaling behavior scaling performed by system okay let's try that I think that'll fix it um, 
Whoa, okay. This is messing it up. I am reading chat, but what did I miss? Client is window, real game won't be. I hear you guys. Reach out, I beg you. Okay, I'm just going to reach out for a second. Go to window size, low resolution. The client isn't supposed to be large. So the game settings can be altered when in game. Got it. So I just need to... I'll just turn this back to the way it was. We'll just undo that. And then we'll try to load and, and just hit play, I think, is what we need to do. Hit right. Sorry, guys, for the delay. Uh, now it's still messed up. Ha! <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, it crashed on me. No, it didn't. Okay. All right. Uh, so, I just got to hit play, right? I just hit play. We'll try it. We'll hit play. We'll hit confirm. Should we do training? We'll just do co-op versus AI. Try PvP, but I don't... I have any experience in this game. <laughs> we'll do Jinx. Yes. <laughs> I saw... Um... I quit the game. Now I'm 40 days free from that hell hole. <laughs> so is it still supposed to be... Is it still supposed to be only windowed right now? Do I need to ready up or anything? I would think it would be full screen by now, but it's still supposed to be windowed? Okay. Is Mord Kaiser really strong right now? You guys are saying to pick Mord Kaiser, but I want to play Jinx. Let me play who I want to play, okay? <laughs> Uh, I don't know these characters at all, so. Jinx. I believe you mean auto attack damage scales for late game and is weak early game. More to stronger and more fun. Gotcha. More ability damages. Well, I want to see what it's like. All right. Lock in, bro. I don't know how to lock in. You're talking to me like I've played this game before. <laughs> I've never played this game. <laughs> Is it my fault that the game took so long to start? I just wish I could modify the settings of the game you know, before having to load it in. <laughs> so. This is, I think I've played League like five or six years ago for less than an hour. So I, I basically brand new player, but I've had a lot of experience in MOBAs, so. Not a total newbie. Looks like it's loading 45%. Dang, it takes a long time to load these matches. Okay, guys, you need a super powerful PC for this one. You see the 30 watt power demand on the CPU, 10 watts on the GPU. <laughs> Just kidding. We're not in the game yet, uh, but still. Our AST86 says, Gizmo, hi. When XMG planning to send you next delivery of Neo 16 18? Uh, it's Neo 16 and 17. They don't have an 18, but... Um, they told me a couple weeks, like a week ago. So I don't know what uh, I don't know what they're gonna do. Um, I'll try to follow up with them. Hopefully, basically they're getting everything figured out first. And uh, once they know everything is good to go, they're gonna send them out again. 
But I'm 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 still going to do an overview, I believe, of the Neo 17 that I have. I'm just working through all the laptops I got right now, and it'll uh, it'll happen soon. I'll do an overview with some basic benchmarks. So. Do do do. And yeah, I have the Neo 17. The screen is black. Okay. We are still not loaded in, so it's a okay. Yep. I get 25 to 15 FPS in team fights, and I was raked plat 10%, top 10%, not very good, but decent. Want to see what this does. Interesting. I mean, I would expect this to get really good FPS in League. League is, shouldn't be very hard to run. Um, Aldo Zampati, any idea when you might get a Zephyrus G16? Um, not sure. I'm hoping in the next month or two I'll be able to do some hands-on with the Zephyrus G16. Also, do you know... It, do you know if there will be any G16 with all AMD components? I'm not sure. JG says, oh my God, 70,000 K BPH. My M1 Mac Max is downloading at 1,200 KPH. Yeah, no, I've got, uh, I've got gigabit ethernet um, or gigabit fiber up and down at this house here, so... Wow, this takes a long time to load. Is this normal? Are all league matches like a five-minute load time? This is crazy. One person on our team has crap Wi-Fi. <laughs> is that what's happening? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. You are waiting for people with potato PCs. Gotcha. Okay, here we are. All right, so we're hitting our 240 FPS max as anticipated, but let's see, if, can I change the settings? Ooh. How do I change the settings? Escape button, okay. Why isn't my mouse working correctly? Oh, it's a scaling issue right now. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell, but basically right now it thinks my mouse is here, but it's actually over here. It's cause I modified the scaling. Anyway, so we'll just mess with the settings and we'll benchmark it, we'll run around. I won't be able to play the game very well. Right now everything's on medium. I'd like to change the settings. Well, we don't want to be getting flagged for AFK. All right, and... Boom. We're trying to set everything to very high. It's very hard to click everything. Uncapped. Okay. There you go. All right, so our average FPS is 580. Uh, jeez. So we'll get, we'll go to where the lanes are fighting. <laughs> and uh, this should give us a better idea of 
at least in the ballpark of F FPS. <laughs> Probably got to kill these uh, wizards. Try to push the tower. Bro, what? <laughs> yeah, no, you're going to be able to just... Uh, yeah, you'll be good. You'll be able to play this game just fine. Just going over the settings again. So we're at QHD plus full screen. Everything's on very high. Graphics set to very high. Oh, we're being attacked. Oh no, they're gonna try to kill me. Yes. I can't level up any of my abilities. <laughs> oh God. All right, so there's, there's your FPS guys for League of Legends. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, can I kill that guy? Come back. I can't move. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I mean, it's barely it's barely breaking a sweat. This game is barely breaking a sweat right now. Um, you know, it's only using 36% of the GPU. GPU utilization, uh, CPU utilization is only 9% as well. Um, yeah, this game is... I wish I could interrupt this guy. Oh, he stopped. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, we're gonna duke it out. We're gonna see if we can die here. Uh, we're gonna die and then we're gonna end it. Yeah, we killed someone. <laughs> so hard to do when the mouse can't click. All right. All right, so I'm just gonna ahead and mute this. And we'll do an overview, impressions, uh, a summary of all the, the results. All right. So, overview, summary, SCAR 18 benchmarks. Absolutely insane. This laptop is uh, pushing crazy high FPS in basically every title. It's not the maximum performance. We saw excellent CPU and GPU temps in almost every game, except for some CPU-bound games. Some of the CPU-bound games were just like... Not, um, I guess, too demanding. Not not too demanding, but like, let me rephrase that. So when you have a CPU-bound game that's a heavy CPU and GPU dual load, like in Hogwarts or maybe um, Overwatch or uh, Fortnite, you know, we're, put, we're pulling 120 watts of power to the CPU, which means that uh, it's going to be, we're going to struggle pushing out um, all of the heat on both the CPU and GPU combined together and the CPU. So the CPU ends up getting like over 90 degrees, 95. We even saw almost some peaks all right up to the hundred point. So um, it makes me wish we could undervolt the CPU even further and potentially even raise the, the like it's not the power cap, but at least undervolting the CPU would help our, our CPU temps there and give us a little more performance in those CPU bound games. Um, Overall, though, the performance was fantastic. No issues except for driver issues in games like Rainbow Six Siege. Um, still can't benchmark that game, unfortunately. Um, the summary of the... Let me switch back over to this mode so we can see all the, the FPS. Uh, Apex Legends on low, we were getting basically nonstop 300 FPS. Hold on. Um, looks like... All right, so, all right, so we're gonna just try to wrap up this still. So Apex Legends, 287 FPS, Hogwarts, 172 with no ray tracing, 112 with ray tracing, um, God of War, 116, Red Dead, 98, um, Overwatch, 260. The esports games were basically pretty consistently getting above 240 FPS. That's fantastic at QHD. All the tests were done pretty much at QHD. Um, 
QHC plus 16 by 10. Um, excellent uh, hard drive speeds and scores with uh, Crystal Disk Mark pulling some pretty insane levels of. Uh, well, maybe we'll just, I'll just go and make this full screen for a little bit here. Um, CSGO 513. Flight Simulator, we saw new highs that we've never seen before with um, 500 or 110 in QHD, which with frame generation, it basically is a CPU bound game, but with frame generation, we're getting extra smooth FPS, which should be really beneficial for playing Flight Simulator in VR if frame generation is supported with VR, which I think it would be. Um, Witcher 3 106 with DLSS Archie on Ultra. I mean, we're getting insane levels of performance at this QHD level. It is fantastic. And, um, I, you know, su I'm super impressed with the performance level. It's hard not to be. Now, this is not going to be the highest level of performance we're going to see out of a gaming laptop this year. I'm confident we'll see higher levels of frame rates from the GT77. Um, and maybe potentially from like the XMG Neo 1617. But still, for on, on air, the temps, overall, the performance, the thermals, the speakers on this machine, the display on this machine, I love it. It's a, it's a great machine. This thing reviews really well. I'm going to give this like top marks. It's, it's are basically top marks across the board for the most part, except for maybe value for your money because... Something like the Strix G18 is just a lot better value for your money. Now, I'm going to take a few questions before the end of the live stream. Um, and so if you guys have any final questions, then uh, we'll we'll go from there. Oh, lost audio. Is audio? No, you guys have audio, right? You guys should have audio. Um, let me know if you didn't have audio there, and I'll redo that outro. Audio is good. Okay, good. All right, uh, so any last any last thoughts or questions from you guys? How much will the difference between a G18 and SCAR18 and Valorant and LOL? Uh, should be no difference, Dennis. They're very CPU-bound, and they have the same CPU. So CPU-bound games are going to be basically the same performance between the G18 and SCAR18. Um, so don't worry about those games. Um, just go, if you're just going to play League of Legends or whatever, just go with the Strix G18. Um, if you're playing AAA games or more demanding esports titles like Warzone or Apex Legends, then the RTX 4090 upgrade will provide more performance. Okay, that's it for the summary. Uh, basically, that, that I'm just going to have to compile all this information and put it into a review format. I've already filmed the B-roll for it. So expect the SCAR 18 review, full detailed review uh, coming up probably in uh, later this week. So when are we testing this st and streaming the GT77? Uh, probably Monday would be my guess. I already have it all set up and ready to go. The highest end version, $52.99. So, yeah. So, so yeah. Really looking forward to trying to overclock that sucker. It's going to be awesome. See you guys later. Peace out. It was a fun stream. It was interesting seeing all the performance numbers. So that's it for this one. See you in the next one.